Okay, time for this week's Street Talk. First off, Gemma, what did you think about the way that Corey was shown this week? So we had an episode every day this week, Monday to Friday, with a double on Friday, because there was some, I don't know, a talent show or something. How did you enjoy it? Um... I thought it was alright. I thought it was alright. I kind of I kind of like the fact that there was always going to be a Corey on every night, but it was a case of, as we've said before, when they've had half an hour episodes on, it's like it feels like it's over before it's begun sometimes. Yeah, but these were obviously written as... As whole episodes because the, they had cliffhangers. What do you mean, written as whole episodes? Well, they were obviously written as to be shown on the same day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were, yeah. So like Monday and Tuesday's episodes were originally yeah. Written so you to go so to you had a you had a cliffhanger on Monday and Wednesday night. Mm. Yeah, which was quite fun. Yeah, I, I I didn't mind it. It was it was quite nice. It's not something I'd want them to. To, to stick to or anything but if it was it's a nice little treat to come home to every day after school so um yeah support of this I can't even remember what the Christmas schedule is coming up I mean I think next week on the podcast I think we're probably going to be recording midweek aren't we we'll watch the first couple of episodes and then we'll record it and then we're going up to my dad's for a bit and then we'll we're, we're going to be all over the place I think uh, we might be not doing some uh, like bonus episodes for, for the next week or two and, until the awards maybe even we'll have to see everybody I don't know but uh, enough about that what have we got to talk about this week well we're going to start off with the case of the munchies because oh that all came out this week Emma knows everybody <laughs> then we have got the smoke and Maria's storyline I thought we could I got a, a long stupid silly line storyline title for this as well, Gemma. We could call it Red Wreck Wrecked Mid Marira Cell Elected. Yeah, that's right. Have a red look at what I'm wreck, red, wreck, wreck, red Wreck Wrecked Amid Maria or Cell Elected. We'll just keep it a smoke and Maria, shall we? We've also got the, the Summer Crush story, which merges with the return, the triumphant return of the Audrey No Visual story, which I'd completely forgotten about, about Audrey not being able to see. Yeah. She had a crash with Rita, didn't she? Like three months ago. I'd completely forgotten about that, but that is back uh, with a bang and a crash. Um, but she's okay. We then had the Hashes to Ashes story, which kind of merged into what was going on with Yasmin and Stu as well. And um, finally, we had Sarah, Lid, and the Mystery Kid. Is it Adams? Are you trying to remember this? Well, I was like, what? Lid? Lid of Lid what? for Lydia. Keep yeah. a lid on it, you know. Um, right. Case of the Munch. This is going to be a great episode, I can tell already. Case of the Munches, Gemma. I'm going to do this one. So, Monday morning, we've got the annual tradition of the school boiler going kaput at Bessie Street. They need to get a heat pump. Uh, uh, they, maybe they do. It's li- at least every two years, one of the schools, their boiler packs up, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I, I hate to break it to Cory Writers, but I don't think boilers pack up quite as much as they like to make out. Well, we don't know, because it might be, it's grimmer up north, isn't it? It is Down grimmer south, up north. it's like... Beautiful tropical sunshine. We don't even need boilers down no. here. No, we've never used our, our central heating, have we? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's whenever they want an excuse to have, oh, we need to have a child at home. What should we what say? Kind of flood teacher or training day or boiler gone? Boiler yeah. gone, it's winter. They it's can't Tuesday, go in like that. It's Tuesday, it's teacher training day. <laughs> My my school boiler has never um, broken. No matter how much I try to attack it with a hammer on days, I don't yeah. want to teach. Uh, Just anyway, crying and, and he's attacking it with a spanner. Tyrone can't look after the girls, so he asks Emma to. Why not? So um, she she um, goes back home and she's she's there with the girls. And um, when she's there, she discovers Curtis's pillbox. Now that's a bit oh, of a no. problem because he's off doing the Three Peaks Challenge, isn't he? And he doesn't get his medicine with him. He must have been out his meds all weekend. What's he going to do? Um, then Gemma comes round and she finds Emma in a massive flap about this. And Gemma's like, don't worry. She, she says, look, he's probably got a load more pills with him. Whenever I had my pills and I went away somewhere, I took some spares. He's going to be okay. Fine. Then we have the first very stupid thing that happened on Monday's episode. And and I will say that pretty much Monday's episode I didn't really enjoy. And there were two <coughs> bits in this story which really contributed to that. Thing number one was that the girls are watching their favourite programme on TV, which is a medical programme, wasn't it? There was like a doctor talking about something or other. I don't know why the girls are watching this. Was it, was no, it I know. a children's medical programme? I don't know. Or did they just... Fan, they fancy the doctor or Nurse, something. I'm afraid he's had a boo boo. Um, but she, she, Emma notices, she recognises the words that just just the very second that she's tuning her ears in to listen to this program, the doctor says, 
I've checked his vital signs and blah blah blah. Ten it, CCs of. I see. I don't even remember. Stats. I don't even remember. And I watched this like five days ago. Yet, despite that, Emma recognizes this as being the exact words that Curtis said when he checked out Harvey after he got crashed into the skip two months ago. Utterly ridiculous. So, uh, surely I'm not the only person that thought that. That completely took me out of it. So the idea of this was so that the Corrie writers could say, ooh, there's something going on not, not quite right here. I think maybe he, Curtis isn't really a doctor. But the thing is, we we're kind of already thinking that by this point. So It would have, have made more sense to have had her talk to somebody like Aggie or something and say a word that Curtis has said and for Aggie to be like... We don't we don't use that phrase anymore, or that's not something that we that you say. I because there are yeah, loads of things like that that like are misapprehensions and things that people say that you know medical people yeah. don't. I'm I'm sure there's lots that else that they could have done, but honestly, I don't think they need it at all. But the very the, the very fact that a she happened yeah, to be yeah. listening the moment he said it, unless well, it's his well, catchphrase, well. I've checked his vitals and whatever, or. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Utterly I'll tell ridiculous. you another way they could have done it and had it a bit more um, thingy. What? Is if Hope and Ruby had been watching it and it had been his catchphrase and then they had repeated it like, nah, 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 they his vitals or whatever. Yeah. Like they think it's funny and cool and they keep repeating it. So but we... then, you know, why would she have not heard this before? And how has Curtis seen this? Well, I, I it's think... it's Hope and Ruby's favourite programme. I think they had the DVD of it, didn't they? I don't know. It did that really seriously didn't make but sense. But they're around Curtis's ha- Curtis and Emma's flat. Yeah, they don't live there. Um, Tyrone no. is Tyrone staying with them? Yes, he is actually. So the, the kids would have been around and they would have had this program on. Yeah, Let's, uh, it's best not to think about it too much because but... really there would there could have been many times when Emma had been sitting around while the kids are watching this medical drama. Yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> they, 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 to try and deflect your attention from that um, strange bit of, uh, of writing, they try and put something else in, which was Ruby just randomly walks over to Curtis's pillbox and it's like, oh, I'll have one of those, thank you. What the heck? How old, I don't know how old she is. Seven, eight, older, nine maybe? No, a kid would not just randomly you're, go over there. Wrong. I'm not wrong. You, no, because I know they should have put a line in there or something to explain why but kids do weird stuff she just randomly walked up yeah. to a pillbox and goes yum yum I'll have that and they got Hope going Ruby no that's dangerous I know but she might have gone oh if this makes Curtis's heart strong then maybe it'll make my heart strong or you know what I mean kids have got weird logic They if, otherwise they'd be driving cars and <laughs> running the country they do but that was I, I was just watching this going what what is this at this point that was two really awful bits of plotting that went on in that episode luckily it, it improved since uh, after then but basically this is just an excuse it was inv- for incredibly Emma, clumsy for Emma to rush Ruby to the hospital hand over the pills and say look she's swallowed some of these I don't know what it is Can you go, go and, uh, and the doctor's like don't worry we'll find out comes back a little bit later and da, 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 it turns out that they're vitamins so these these things that Curtis has been popping have been nothing. They've just been a placebo. Well, no, not a placebo. That's not the right word, no. is it? They've just been a, a, a fake. Um... Yes, part of his lies. Yes, part of his lies. So that was the that was a cliffhanger on Monday. And that... I would imagine that. Well, I remember reading my friend's pharmacy book, and I think all pills have got like different designs and patterns. Oh, yeah, you on tell them. me this. And you can look up, and you can you can match what the pattern of the pill is. Yeah. So they would have just done that. I would imagine. This one with, a, like, they... with a, like, an imprint of an orange in it or something. Like, there's a Flintstone on this. Maybe they... I thought it was ecstasy or something. Maybe... <laughs> maybe they had it and they're like, they're th- pretty sure this is a vitamin, but I don't know. I'll take it. Oh, I feel healthier. <laughs> yeah, Best this is definitely... It's either that or it's St John's wort. <laughs> Next day, she, Emma's still... It, she's in total denial about this. She's like, no, they can't be vitamins. These are the medicine that, that Curtis has for his, for his dicky heart. No, it can't. His unnamed, unspecific, undiagnosed heart condition. Yeah. Is super, super fatal. But it's that. It's for that. Back at home, Tyrone's really worried about this because he. Tyrone's at this being point, an asshole. Well, no, he he doesn't realise that at this point that the medicine was just vitamins. So he's having to go at Emma and say, "I can't believe you left left these left these pills out. His heart medicine. Ruby's taken some. It could be anything." And Emma's like, "No, it's okay." And Tyrone's like, "No, it's not okay. Just because the doctor says it's fine, I don't. I know, second but I still opinion, think he's please." Being an asshole. No, he was a little bit. Because it's like, well, sorry, 
if you don't like it, look after your own children. <laughs> he was like, working. I didn't very deliberately under cars. give the children pills, like horse pills, to kill them off. I think, I and, think and maybe... And it's not like he's father of the year. True, but I think maybe he's maybe a bit frustrated because Emma's kind of chill about it and saying it's fine. And he's like, I don't believe it. So anyway, she, she eventually has to explain that it was just... No, she doesn't tell the, the truth, actually, is, does she? If she... Easy. I, I understand you'd be mad, but she did exactly what she needed to have done. She took the kid immediately to hospital yeah. to get it checked out. It's not like she said, oh, no, she's taking a pill, but she's fine. It's OK. You know what I mean? She immediately sorted the problem in the most responsible way possible. This is exactly what happened to poor Emma when Eccles died. She had no she had no control over the situation. Somebody else put her in charge of something because she's she's like a walkover and she'll do whatever you say if you ask her nicely, because she's too nice to say no. So she's she's already been fobbed into doing this, looking after this dog and looking after this kid. Then the blooming dog dies or the kid takes a pill. And then next thing you know, it's all her fault. <laughs> you know, she's the worst person on earth. She's getting ranted at, left, right and centre by everybody. And she hasn't done anything wrong. <laughs> I mean, if children were self-sufficient like that, like I said... They'd be running the country. They'd be Boris cars. Johnson, wouldn't they? <laughs> the absolute competent leader of the free world. Um, so um, Emma says to him, "Look, she just got some of my multivitamins. They must have got in there or something." So she doesn't at this point obviously say that it's Curtis because that's still a uh, secret to most people by the end of the week. Well, she doesn't even know why there are vitamins in this. No, she, she she doesn't get what what's going on at the moment. She's kind of piecing it together as the as the episodes go on. So later on, she goes over to the cafe and um, and Bernie says to says, "Oh, well, Gemma's told me about Ruby taking." Curtis's medicine. Emma has to say no. It's just multivitamins. And Kurt, uh, Steve is there listening in, and he's like, "Hang on a minute. You're saying Curtis has gone off to do the Three Peaks Challenge without his medicine?" And Emma says to him, oh, "It's fine. I've heard from him. All is well." So it's lies. She's she's been she's been um, caught up in in this spiral of lies that Curtis has, has got going for him. So well, he comes back to um, face the consequences later because he's home. End of the episode. He finds Emma in the dark. She's all sad and teary, and says. What is this? What are these pills? They're, they're vitamins. They, they, you said they're your pills. And he's, he says, um, yeah, uh, no, no, he, he, he can't, he, he got no, he, he just, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I don't know what they are. And Emma says, you're fibbing, you massive liar. This is what's been going on here. And he's all offended at first, isn't he? Yep. He says, oh, no. You, oh, no, you're checking you, up on me. You, you, yeah, you're checking up on me. You don't believe me, what, what I'm saying. And, well, actually, yeah, I, I found a homeopathic remedy because all these other pills that the doctors have been giving me weren't working. So I did a bit it's of research. And, and, yeah, these, these vitamins do help my heart, actually. I'm definitely well, like, dying, though. He's like, they can't do anything for me. And I was worried about all the side effects of those pills. Mm. I'm going to start hatching a new thing that's wrong with me based on the side effects of the horrible heart pills that yeah. are so strong and evil. Don't worry, love. I'm still... Dying. I'm still dying. It's okay. It's still fatal. Yeah. Wednesday. Bit of an awkward morning for Curtis and Emma. He's still looking for sympathy, though. saying, oh, oh, my kidneys, they're packing in because all these pills that I was taking. Oh, oh, oh where is me? And Emma's I've saying, definitely got kidney failure. Yeah. And, and and Emma, she she doesn't know what to do because she he was he got mad at her the previous day when she was since she confronted him and, and called him out on being a liar and she's like oh yeah oh sorry oh and he says you gotta swear that you trust me and um she says she does but then when he goes off she has a look on his laptop and very handily he's got a website up that says ten signs that you've got kidney disease or something along those kidney lines failure. so yeah that's right so she. She knows that he's the sort of thing that he's Lying just been again. saying he's got from there. He needs well, to he cover his tracks a bit better. Off the list of symptoms. It's his own fault, really. I mean, after this happened, he left his medicine out, and so he he should be feeling, oh, I think they might be on to me at he this point. He should be point. a bit more secretive. Close down your browser window. I know. At or or you know, do it in incognito, incognito mode. mode. It's not just for you know what. <laughs> it's for also. So it's not just for looking at pictures of Voldemort. <laughs> Um, so Emma phones up Neville. Um, remember that uh, Curtis's dad slash stepdad. Uh, meets slash up. dead dad. That's that's dead dad. Yeah, they, they meet up in the cafe, and uh, he he didn't know that this. He he assume he was told I think last time from Curtis that he and that Curtis and Emma had split up. So he's like, what do you mean you got a wedding coming up next? And she says, look, I just wanted to meet up with you to so you could fill in any blanks about Curtis's heart condition. And then he's just like. You need to get away from him as soon as you can. He doesn't have a heart condition. Yes. 
Um, well, no, does he say that? No, he doesn't say well, that at this point. He just He's just very st- strongly hinting, you need to get away from, from my son. And yes, that's right, he is my son. I am his real dad, um, not his stepdad. Um, so then Emma comes home at the end of that episode and says, um, what, what's going on? I've just been speaking to your dad. And Curtis says, oh, don't worry about that. They've confirmed it. My kidneys are packing up. I haven't got long left. And she's like, I know there is nothing wrong with you. And Curtis says, who's put this idea in your head then? This is Thursday, we're on to now. I've been talking to your dad, says Emma. Your real dad, your actual living bona fide dad. Um, He says, she says, um, that his dad said that he has got factitious disorder. So it comes out at last, the name of this thing that uh, that Curtis is suffering from. He's like, no, I don't. Um, I'm definitely dying. I've got bad kidneys. I've got bad heart. Anyway, we're getting married next week and I love you. Isn't that, isn't that going to be lovely? Let's change the subject. And so he says, right, one last chance, matey. Tell me the truth. And he's like, okay, fine. Fine, I'm not dying. I couldn't believe that he admitted it. I know. I was so excited. Um, so meanwhile... Um, well, this is going on. Steve's telling Tracy that Curtis has put £4,000 in Oliver's account. We see him doing this earlier. I don't, did, did it, it was, I don't know where we got this £4,000 from. Is this the money that Steve we, nobody, gave him months ago? Nobody can work out where this money came from because we had a conver- there was a discussion I saw on our Facebook group and some people think that it's Steve's money and some people think it could be the money that he earned from the speaking engagement that he did at the weekend. But mm. that would be quite a lot of money for well, a, yeah, exactly. a support group. But he obviously did get some money from that. So it's very confusing. Yeah. And he obviously had a specialist look at him. But I don't see how it could have cost £4,000 for him to go, no. you again. <laughs> so anyway, they met their target. They got their 100 grand. What a great well, bloke Curtis yeah. is, says Stephen, Tracy, etc, etc, etc. Speaking of all this adulation and praise that's coming Curtis's way, that's what he says is, you know, why one of the reasons why he does this it, he says oh when i was when i was sick when i had a kid or i had an operation and um when i was a kid yeah 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 uh, I, my, my parents stopped fighting they looked after me because this is the thing i said this before factitious disorder can sometimes um come about when you have already had an illness as a child mm. and he did have a hole in his heart and it got fixed and he's got a scar on his chest where yeah. that had happened and um that seemed to be a trigger yeah for him so and, and he, he talks about this he says look maybe I thought well maybe if I'll get ill again my parents will get back together again maybe they'd focus their attention on me a little bit more it's really difficult to stop now it started especially with everyone saying what a hero I am and um and, and, and throughout this conversation, Emma realises as well, she puts two and two together that he was never actually a medical student. And she says, look, you never even gave me the chance to meet the real you. I don't know who you are anymore. And he says, look, we start now. We're, we're fresh. You, uh, I've told you everything now. Um, let's let's start again and get married next week. I'm, no. not, I'm not sick in the physical sense, but I am still mental. sick in the brain. Um, so Emma says, but what about lying to my family? You wasted all that money. My, my dad gave you money for tests you didn't need for the consultant and everything. How can I ever trust you? And all the, the audience is going, yes. You to, can't. You can't trust him. He's, Don't marry him, you plonker. He's plonka. abusive. He says, look, I just want to get help. I want to get better. And she takes off her ring and says, pack your bags, sling your hook. You're out of here. She Good. goes over to see Steve and Tracy, and Steve can see that she's upset here, but she thinks at first it's just you know more of her being worried about Curtis's illness. Um, and he says, "Look, I, I want to take you and Curtis out to dinner, please." Um, so so they, they they agree to go to um, the bistro. Um, Emma goes home to find Curtis. She finds him packing his stuff. Says, "Tell me more about this money," because Steve and Tracy had told him about the four thousand pounds he put into the account. Um, she says, right, I'm going to give you one more chance, one more chance, as long as, soap trope incoming, no more lies. No more lies. Hashtag Honesty, please. please. Yeah, we're never going to lie to each other everybody. ever again. We're going to tell everybody about the fact that you're nuts. Create straight. Oh, sorry, that's very... In, um... Well, I already said mental. Well, we did say before that there aren't very many people in the world that have well, got Well, just because there disorder. aren't very many people that have it... Um doesn't mean that you can be mean well, but one of the things about this program is they are showing that lots of people i mean amy i suppose is the, is the main person that knows at the moment are having the quite i would say natural reaction to saying what a massive liar he Listen, is can i just say something here and i've thought this before about other things and it's probably not right to say but i, th- I don't think i'm the only person that thinks it um just because your bad behavior has a name 
doesn't mean it doesn't affect people and it isn't, you know, a bad, mm. you know, it doesn't have consequences. Like, I know that it's got it's got a name for it, but there are lots of other things that people do and say. Like, you know, what Jeff did to Yasmin. If, if tomorrow somebody said, oh, no, that's just domestic abuser syndrome. <laughs> you, know, you know, would everybody say, oh, well, in Poor that Jeff. case, he can't help himself. You know, there's, there's really... And Curtis does know what he's doing. It's a pattern of behaviour that is caused by some kind of problem that you've got either either for whatever reason, because we said before, factitious disorder can be due to anxiety issues and stress, or it can be due to having a borderline personality disorder. Mm. And, um, you know, Jeff probably had a borderline personality disorder or some kind of you know, issue along those lines is never diagnosed or mentioned. Mm. But he still abused Yasmin yeah. nearly to death. And, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel Curtis bad. Curtis has clearly his... driven his dad insane just yeah, looking at he's him. he's ruined so many people's lives. Yeah, and, and um, he could have tried to get help for it, but he hasn't. Well, he prefers to the get thing. the attention. It's very difficult. There are some things that are very difficult to treat because part of the problem is that you don't recognise that you need treatment. And I totally understand, and, and you know, but you, you can't just wave your hand and say, well, he, he can't do anything about it. or Especially so in a world like Corrie, where you can get a next day psychologist's appointment at a drop of a hat. He could have just strolled into the office at any point. I know. Anyway. I know, yeah, it's, um, it's one of these things where there's a very good saying from another podcaster that I like to listen to. It's called Marcus Parks. And he said... Your mental health issues are not your fault, but they are your responsibility. And I, I think that's one of the best quotes I've ever heard about it because um, you have to seek help. You can't just you can't just inflict the, these issues on yourself and on people yeah, around you. Can't you can't just use it as, as an excuse to. Um, I mean, it's, to it's, do whatever you want, really, because I mean. And so it's obviously obviously some mental health issues are much more severe and serious than others. It just feels like that with what Curtis has got. I understand it's a compulsion, but there are other things too that are compulsions. Like, you know, some people are like compulsively steal things, you know? Mm. Does that mean they shouldn't go to prison because it's a compulsion? Mm. Instead, yeah, of, exactly. instead of stealing because you're, you know, I would like to, I, I want this thing or I need the money so I'm going to steal it. They're just like, just, just, just fancy I'm sure licking they had it. A, I'm sure they had a story like on Like Rider. <laughs> Who was that on Coronation <laughs> Street that had a bit of a kleptomaniac um, spate. So I'm thinking about like 10 years or so ago. I'm sure there was somebody... I don't know, but you things. know, that's just an example of antisocial behaviour that's yeah. driven by some kind of mental compulsion that, you know, still causes criminal behaviour. Mm. Mm. It's just unfortunate, but it's not... Yeah, I'm not going to not say that he's a, he's a total arsehole. Just because <laughs> there's a word, you can say this is what's wrong with him. Yeah, because yeah. it's not like he didn't know either. This is the thing; it's yeah. very difficult to. to it, I try to empathise. It kind of comes really. out that he. Well, I mean, because he talks about it, because they go to this psychologist on Friday, don't they? Um, Emma has to lie to Tracy and say, "Oh, we're going to see the wedding photographer." Sorry, I can't start yeah, my hen do at nine o'clock in the a... morning for I some know, reason. She's like, Let's go get so they, drunk. They go to this psychologist, and he says, "Yeah, I make things up. I tell people things about me that aren't true. That I'm sick. That I'm dying." He says sometimes he is disgusted with himself, and sometimes it just feels normal. And he's not sure if he wants to stop yeah. because he likes the attention. So he's very, very aware that this is going on and the effect that it's having on people. Yep, he says, that's right. They they honestly, they are, they know that they, this is the thing. Um, I did have somebody ask me this question the other day about um, fictitious disorder. Do they know they're sick or not? They absolutely know they're not sick. Some of them make themselves sick. Some of them just pretend to be sick. So it's not like hypochondria. No. Whereas like, I think I've got something And the other thing I also me. wanted to say is that it, this feels to me, this factitious disorder, it feels to me as though it's a symptom of something rather than a disorder in itself. So um, Curtis, I think, has got some kind of personality disorder and this is a symptom of that issue, not the other way around. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so it can manifest this lying about being sick. It could be because I'm really worried and I feel like nobody likes me and I want to get attention or I'm lonely or something. So I'll then do that. So the actual root cause of the problem 
is something completely different. And I don't think people know enough about factitious disorder to be able to really properly understand how to treat it because surely it's very dependent on the source of the problem. Mm. <coughs> so if you're if you're if you've got anxiety, obviously treat your anxiety. Mm. And one then it will I'm, one thing I'm wondering is yeah when they when they do these issues stories on Coronation Street quite often it's to raise awareness of it and you'll get people who are watching going, "Oh, I know somebody who's like that. Oh, I think so and so might be being abused. Oh, I think so and so might have OCD or oh, I recognize myself in this." I wonder if there's anybody that's watched this story and has either realised that they've got it or they recognise the signs and seen somebody else and think maybe someone else has got it or maybe they've just accused somebody else who's having I know. it who's actually Can I really just say, the other The other reason that I really am not that sympathetic to this, even though I really, believe me, I'm trying to be, is that it causes, first of all, it causes problems for people who already have difficulty accessing healthcare because they're not believed because of symptoms. There have been decades of women going to doctors and it mostly is women with issues that's you know that don't get diagnosed properly because they don't believe them they think they're malingering or lying or seeking attention seeking or trying to get drugs for some reason and they they can't find what's wrong with them so they just think they're making it up it's also using up space in hospitals and doctors surgeries for lies when we're going through a pandemic there are people that are dying because they can't get to the hospital I think and you've this got is something Curtis that Emma says to Curtis asking around going way. I just want attention well you know what you could have actually done the three peaks challenge couldn't you you could have actually raised that four thousand pound for Oliver couldn't you and then you would have got the attention mm. Mm. well I mean he, I guess he got some attention at the speech that he did didn't he it just, he went and they went to this these people and said how awful it is living with a heart condition. But look on the bright side. It just seems it just seems so frustrating because genuinely it seems as though if you have this you cannot really stop yourself. Mm. And I just it makes it worse in a way, doesn't it? Because mm. this silly it's silly and it's time wasting. And you know, worst case scenario, some of these people. Will, will cause somebody else to die because they couldn't get treatment or they weren't believed when they went to go and get help. Yeah. Or some of them actually end up killing themselves because they make themselves sick. And they uh, I've heard of instances of them, of people with this, injecting things into their bodies like, what did I tell you? Yes, bacteria, feces. Fecal matter. Yeah, all kinds of, to make themselves ill, to get the attention. Mm. It's obviously a horrible thing to have, but it's, you know... Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if anybody did watch this and thought, hang on a minute, I've got that. Or even know, like looking the at the other side, like going, oh, I hadn't really considered that it stops other people from getting the treatment they need. Maybe I should if try and get some help If you're a doctor and you have somebody coming into your office and they're already quite emotional and it feels as though they're playing their symptoms up and you're not sure that there's actually anything wrong with them because you can't diagnose anything. It's just, you know, just pain somewhere or here or whatever. You're going to think, is this factitious disorder? Mm. Isn't it? Wouldn't it be easier if it was? And then you'd be like trying to get them help. And part part of the thing about having it is that you deny you've got it. Yeah. Or it just, <laughs> the, you know, the fact that this exists causes harm to people, not just the people who have it. And that's before you even take into consideration Curtis's poor parents and what he's doing to Emma and what he's now doing to Steve. Yeah, poor little Emma. Mm. poor Emma she's going through the ringer this week she she um after they finish talking to the psychologist she goes and has a little bit of a private chat with her and says like well, she really comes back in, really struggling she? with it yeah she does she goes back in uh, can you actually help him because I'm getting married to him in a few days time and I don't know if I can spend my life with someone who I can't trust well I I really did not like this scene the, the says oh, the woman says oh it's possible but yeah small small steps I um, was really she I mean she couldn't have turned around and said maybe you shouldn't Marry him. How long have you known him? What, six months? Yeah, maybe not. I don't know what... <laughs> I do not know what the... Um, what the procedure is here. But, you know, she's not a real therapist, is she? She's a fake therapist on a TV show. Um, so she doesn't really have to follow the rules <laughs> because <laughs> nobody else seems to. But honestly, it is incredibly, incredibly difficult to treat this. And I, you know, if you know somebody with it or if you have it, I'm sorry to say, it, you know, to worry you. But it's all... It's, it, I don't think they really know how to treat this. So the fact There's that this no, therapist... Like, cognitive therapy. 
it depends on the sim- on the on the root cause of the issue. Mm. If you have borderline personality disorder, that is a lifelong therapy issue that you have to continually battle with yourself to make sure that you are not because it, it can it manifests in abuse a lot of the time. This is what Curtis is doing to to Emma. He is abusing her. He is lying to her and manipulating her. And nobody can tell me any different. So this this therapist, I don't know whether she's employed by Curtis or employed by them both as a couple. I don't know if she's an actual um if she's a couples counsellor or if she's a medical counsellor mm. or who she is or what she's doing if she's not a medical counsellor she should this is beyond her remit but she should say to emma actually the, di- the prognosis for this is incredibly bleak this is going to be hard work and very tough for you both yeah she needs to be honest with her not get a little wishy-washy <laughs> oh small steps one but one by one first thing he's got to do is stop lying about being nearly dead <laughs> you know what i mean she she needs to be straight with her it is not easy to live with yeah yeah um, so they go back home, they have a bit of a soppy moment together, and I love you, I love you, boo, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then the stag and hen night revelries get underway, um, and, and fans of Crazy Mary were probably loving it last night, when she was striding down the street with her, um, with her slash and, and fawning over Adam Barlow again. Um, Amy's there as well, wearing a nice, uh, green leopard skin thing, wasn't she? That was quite funny. And, um, and she says, she, she does a curly, doesn't she? She tells Emma that she's got, she's named a star after the two of them. Sweet. And, Emma, and um, Emma had a tiara that said Bridezilla without the eye. Oh yeah, it said Bridezilla, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, but Emma, um, Emma hits about the star, goes off upset, because she's obviously still, um, bit torn up inside about whether she should actually be marrying this bloke or not. Emma uh, goes home, Amy chases after her. I wonder whether when Emma got this tiara, she said, oh, but there's no eye in Bridezilla. <laughs> She's not Bridezilla, <laughs> so they took it off, but there's already a second one. So. Maybe. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> no, it didn't. Um, so, uh, uh, and back at home, this is when Emma confesses to Amy that I've been I've been keeping Curtis's secret um he's got factitious disorder it's a real it's a real issue and Amy's like what the hell I'm disgusted with this guy why on earth would you still want to marry him he's been lying to you we're lying to everyone else he's nuts the thing what I liked about Amy is that she validated my my reaction yeah because I've been trying wishy-washy you know my way around it but at the end of the day it's Curtis's problem it's nobody else's problem there was nothing in the episode that made us that was written to make us think oh Amy you're overreacting you're not you're not thinking See, this is, about it, Curtis. I find this very interesting because I know that I know the actor who plays Curtis has done a lot of research into this and spoken to people who, who researched into a factitious disorder. I don't know if you've spoken to anybody who says they've got it because I, I, you know, there like I said, many. one of the things. No, it's not just that. It's like you don't know you've you don't oh. admit you've got it. You yeah. don't really want to talk about it. Uh, he's trying to play this quite sympathetically, but. What does Coronation Street as a show think? Mm. And are they worried about being accused of demonising people with this mental health condition? I know, because they like to do their issue story so much, but it, it, it was in no other one would it ever kind of make out that the that somebody with a mental issue was you know, a villain or, or yeah. even potentially villain. Because this is where we're left at the end of today's episode with Curtis, isn't it? Like, because, is he a wrong one? To be fair, many mental health conditions do impact the people that love you and try to help you mm. he, in fact this disorder is by no means the only the only one where people who who love you are going to have a tough time trying to help you deal with your problem mm. but it just seems honestly a, like a very abusive Thing. thing to do. I just, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, no, no, it's, you, I, I totally agree. Oh, well, yeah. No, no, it's fine. We, um, Amy says, look, people are going to be pretty mad when Curtis doesn't <laughs> yeah. die, you know. Even though there, there is no I time really limit this. on it. They just be, she's expecting people to just be waiting, going, oh, oh, she oh, going? come on, come on. I just really like the I fact my hat that... for the funeral. I just really like, I had this really strong mental image of like all the, all the Barlows sitting around in the front room and like Steve looks at his watch and he's like, He's not dead yet. I don't understand this. It's not, and it's then Tracy starts going, what the hell? He's supposed to be dead by now. I'm really actually quite cross now. because <laughs> well, I, He's going to stay alive, but he's so boring. I've got all these bridge rolls in the freezer. 
Um, and Emma says, look, please just don't tell anybody. We will do it after the wedding. And Amy does because she's a kind sister like that. Um, meanwhile, it's oh, stag do. Oh, my God. Do. If I, uh, I know uh, Amy's got a lot of, you know, tutspa. Yeah, and, well, uh, she's got a bit of Tracy in her, hasn't she? Um, I just wish that she is a bit older and a bit more assertive because I think most other people of a similar age or older to Emma would be like, I don't actually think I'm going to let you marry him. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell still, everybody. There's still time. The wedding's on Monday, it's isn't it? It's not Amy's it? responsibility. But if, if Emma was my friend, I would say, I'm going to do everything I can to stop you from getting married to this guy. And I know that this is wrong. But I think this is less wrong than what Curtis is doing to you. And you're going to thank me you in the You thank me run. in the long run, exactly. Yeah. No. So, stag do now. So, we've got the, the beast Because the thing is, the only reason yes. I'm saying this is not... It's because when somebody's being abused... Very often they will not recognise it. And if you try to insert yourself into the relationship and try to break them up, it is only going to cause them to cleave harder to the person that is abusing them. Well, this okay. is like what we saw with Jeff and Yasmin yeah. as well, isn't it? But, when Cathy tried to intervene, Yasmin doubled down. But in this case, Emma knows. You can t- see it by the way she's crying. And by the way, when Amy told her that, you know, Curtis was, was being mean to her, the way that she reacted, she knows. She knows that. She knows that she, she knows shouldn't marry right, him. Yeah. She just kind of needs somebody right. to tell her, to give her permission almost. Because she's so nice, I think she would marry him just to be polite. She, she would. She so would. she needs somebody to take her by the hand and say, I'm taking this out of your out of your hands. This is no longer your problem. Yeah, she's You're not going to marry him. She's too accommodating. She's a bit too much of a pushover, she is, is Emma. Yeah. Um, anyway, so. Poor Emma. Stag Won't do. somebody think of Emma? Let me talk about stag do. We've got Steve, we've got Curtis, we've got Peter, we've got Ken, nobody else. He hasn't There's got any always friends, such remember. a bizarre. Yeah, who, who can we get in that? Uh, random people. It's the Barlows, nobody else. Um, every, they, they play a game where they have to decide what somebody else is drinking or, or something, don't they? Um, and, and then they all start downing shots, including Ken. <laughs> Which is quite funny. He was sitting there with his shot, wasn't he? He's going, ah, oh, so refreshing. Oh, alcohol is vegetarian. Because <laughs> Steve's challenged Actually, Ken. It's not. Ken Steve says he's going to drink Ken under the table, which I found hilarious. But anyway, so they're having a lovely time there. Hens arrive at the Rovers. Jenny's got a bath bomb to give Emma. Um, is Was this a um, uh, foreshadowing of the bomb that will be dropped at the wedding when it all comes out, maybe, in a fragrant puff of... Puff yeah puffiness <laughs> um amy says look um as she just says to emma that you remember you need to tell people the truth try after the wedding whatever their reaction is going to no. be you got to make sure everybody knows emma this is the thing she know emma knows it's wrong because if she truly believed she had a future with curtis she would tell them before everyone before the wedding yeah she's you kind have of to lie to she's, people. she's kind of saying i'm, I'm gonna lock myself into yeah, this exactly. wedding because i think people will talk me out of it yeah yeah, what the only thing I'm thinking here that is a positive is that if we get to the ceremony, we'll get to see Emma's wedding dress. Oh yeah, I I I, I have Which to has say, been designed by Sean. I have seen what Emma have and you? Curtis are wearing on Monday. Yes, I've is seen. Is it a is it a Tinky picture. Winky dress like Alice Tinker? No. Is it crazy? Um. Don't tell me. Right. It's it's Monday. You you don't have to wait long. Is it crazy or is it Monday? Uh, Who who can tell? Um, Can I just tease you with the fact that um, you might the Curtis's outfit might be a bit more um, remarkable than Emma's even. I've just got this really vivid image of him for some reason in a baby blue tuxedo with a blue top hat and a cane. I'm saying nothing. I'm saying nothing. So um, he. He, uh, Curtis and, and Steve get back home. Steve's a bit three sheets of the wind after probably getting... I can't remember what they said whether who run out of him and Ken, but anyway. After a while, you He realises he's forgotten to pay the charity. And he says, Curtis, can you do it? Here's my bank details. Here's my PIN number. Um, but I didn't get whether it was... It was I didn't get whether it was 1966, whether it was 2021. It no, because you weren't it. listening. What is it then? It's 1966, but it nearly was 2021. Because because of the the Euros. Yeah. Yeah. But we lost, didn't we? We did lose. I remember it well. Um, That's also Tim's PIN number. Um, I I wondered whether there was a reason that that was dropped into the conversation. Is it going to become, you know, crucial to the plot that Tim's got the same PIN number as Steve or that now Curtis knows Tim's? I don't know why it would be at the moment. It's really stupid. It felt like an odd thing to mention otherwise. That they stole each other's PIN numbers, but you you did that to my... 
computer password. I did, yeah. The password that I use for everything now used to be Gemma's and I adopted it as my own. Um, Steve crashes out on the sofa and Curtis is looking kind of villainously at this piece of paper that's got all the bank details on. Mine. So he goes back home, have you? He um he finds Emma packing for the hotel to, to go off and have the you know the last night of freedom in a hotel and they have a bit of an awkward exchange about all the secrets and lies that are going on but it ends with her telling him that she loves him she goes off and then he pulls out Steve's uh, card taps away on his phone logs into his bank account and we're kind of left there all cliffhangery about what's he gonna do with Steve's money. And we're all there going, that's not how charity fundraising works. Yes, that, that did stand out to me. You don't put it in your own account. No, I, I mean, I know that uh, Virgin just giving has now ended because that's what Sal was using for a 50k yeah. phone. Maybe he was on Virgin and they said, look, uh, you need to carry we'll this on to, to December. This Can you just look after it for us? It's only going to be for a few weeks, isn't it? But yeah, Steve's got this this money just in his bank account. It didn't make sense And it, it because... wasn't just that money because it was other money as well. So it's just like his current account or something. Yeah, he was just putting it into his personal account. Yeah. That's stupid. Although and I think maybe they had referred to this before, because earlier on in the year, wasn't Tracy accused of dipping into it to pay for clothes or something? I can't remember, but seeing it actually happen there, it's like, no, that doesn't, that's not how it works. Well, also, no, it why does have. why does he need his PIN number for it? You don't need your PIN number for online bank accounting, do you? Tell the person who wrote the script. <laughs> um, the, yeah, it doesn't make sense, and, and I can understand why, you know, you might you might end up accidentally collecting it all in your bank account if people were like coming up to you and giving you ten pound notes or whatever. But we know that it was there was an online tracker, and we also mm. know that Curtis paid money in and it went up immediately. So it can't be connected. It must be you know what I mean. It yeah. can't just be in, in Steve's Don't bank account. Don't think about that too hard, shall we? <laughs> no, I'm not going to think about it anymore. I think it was stupid that Steve forgot to transfer it to the charity anyway. Well, why, I also think, why, why did it, it need to be doing done on right a Friday then? night when you're bladdered? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also, know. why are you walking around with all the information about your bank in your wallet? No, no, he, he wrote it down. He did write he it wrote, down. I thought it was. I thought he took it out of his wallet I and gave it to him. Well, I don't know. That's Steve, isn't it? Walking around with his bank details there. But um, yeah, I, I think we all know the real reason all this happened. It's for plot reasons and cliffhangerish reasons. Um, How else are you supposed to steal the charity money? Yeah. So do, what do you think? I, I, will, I don't know whether he's actually going to steal it or whether it was just there as a bit of a tease to the audience to make us think that he's going to steal it. But then on Monday, he has actually donated it to the charity because surely Steve will be able to check on Monday morning like, oh, Curtis says he's done it. Yeah, it's all in there now. I, I don't know. And I also just would like to point out that if I was Curtis, and I wasn't an evil villain I would say no mm. somebody said to me would you like to transfer £100,000 from a bank account to another bank account at uh, like midnight while you're slightly drunk I'd say no <laughs> because we already had to transfer a load of money for the house deposit and that oh, yeah, that's terrified terrifying. me and that's not you know that wasn't £100,000 no, it wasn't £100,000 was was <laughs> yeah it's kicking a few buttons um, but I don't know I I still haven't really got the impression that this is all about the money and that he's just going to take it and run. Well, because I think he, in uh, as as ill advised as some of his decisions might be, and as you know, as cowardly as he sometimes is for you know not just confessing the truth or, or, or whatever, I, I haven't. It doesn't seem like he just wants a load of money. There's not when the clues dropped into the scripts about I haven't got anything. I, I don't know. It would be bad plotting and um, m- muddied motivation if that were the reason. Mm. So I'm not. I don't know what's going to happen with that. But you know, the other thing I want I, I just, to I point think, out. I think he's going to do it. Is that I am the expert on this, as you guys all know, um, because I read a Mayo Clinic article and what Wikipedia more do you need? entry. So those are my credentials, in case anybody to know wonders. about facetious, about fictitious disorder. So I mean. don't worry, put your mind at rest. Mm. I am qualified <laughs> to give out opinions about mental health issues on the show. <laughs> so um, are, you, are you enjoying this now it's all Absolutely out? Absolutely bloody loving it. I, this is due 2.0. I saw a funny tweet. Um, somebody said, oh, I will love this story even more if on... If on Monday, um, Curtis rips his face off to reveal Jude underneath. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, we well, we put our Jude character profile on YouTube this week, didn't we? Yeah. And in tribute to that, and, and Paddy Wallace sent us a message today saying, "Yeah, oh, I haven't listened to that." So thank but you, Paddy, for getting in touch. I with did us. love Jude. I thought he was great. I I, just, I enjoyed I just, Joy Jude more. There's something totally fascinating about compulsive lying to me. I, I found Jude more entertaining than Yeah, because here's, a, here's this comedic lies. He's like, I'm yeah. Dr. Barlow. I, I'm, you know a I mean? I'm a marine biologist. Bar- I'm a marine And get I'm that dinner expert. party. Do you remember the dinner party yeah. that he put on with his acting friends? I'm an expert friends? in seahorses. Yeah. And, and going to the, and working at the shop with his shark hat on. Yeah. I've, whereas Curtis... Because I, the thing is about Jude's lies is that he was they were very grandiose, but the reality was sort of so mundane it was funny, like the, the juxtaposition between those two yeah. things. Whereas Curtis is like it's just a really sad and tragic, pathetic attempt. Because the the thing that boggles my mind also is he's not stupid and he's very good looking. Hmm. He could get attention by just starting an Instagram page about his pecs. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. People with factitious disorder, have you heard of Instagram? You can get attention on that for pictures Just of your dinner. Just ask Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I, I am enjoying this more, definitely. I think... Are you enjoying Jude more, you said? No, I said I'm enjoying this more. I thought you said you liked Jude. No, no, I'm enjoying the story more now than I was a few months ago. And, and I think part of the problem with this story, maybe, although I don't know how they could have done it another way, is that it took a long time for them to get to this stage. And, and, and sorry, but Curtis has been a fairly dull character for most of his run on the show. And it's only really now that it's all come out that I'm starting to find him interesting. And actually, I was finding him... I, I found him a more engaging character to watch in that little interim period between the audience knowing about it and Emma finding out. Because now that Emma knows, it's I don't know, he's not he's not tragic. sneaking around anymore quite so much. I know I know he is doing a bit of sneaking like he was at the end of Friday's episode, but I, I quite like the idea of Emma being blissfully in the dark about it. And now I'm watching it going, oh, Emma, you plonker, just obviously don't marry him. Oh, but she loves him. Yeah, she's... I, I think the story does suit Emma very, very well. Right. I, I, don't, the I think there's lots of other characters that if they found out that who they were, that the guy they were dating was doing this to them, they would kick him to the curb. Because she but loves Emma him and is, she wants to help him. She's like, oh, we need to do this together. She's so bloody that sweet. That bloody therapist didn't bloody help her either. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah, in, enjoying, um, not loving, loving, loving. I, I, was, I was also a little bit surprised that the, the reveal didn't come at the wedding. I thought it'd be, um, I don't know how particularly, but well, I thought I they'd want it... <laughs> to have it both at the same day. <laughs> I can just imagine um, that scenario would be Curtis and um, Emma at the altar and then uh, the the vicar says, Is there, are there any objections to this? And then the doors burst open and Dr. Handy, or whatever his name is, comes running in, <laughs> going, stop, stop immediately. I have the results of your test. You have to re... Emma, you must hear this. Before you go any further, the results are, he's lying. <laughs> Do you think they are going to get married? Are they going to go through no, with it? No, no. I... I really hope not. They they shouldn't. I'd like to say no, but sometimes Coronation Street likes to detract no. stories for a bit too long. Yeah, and I having know. Emma married to him just adds this extra complications. No. All this can go on for a I little bit longer. I want him to be gone next week. I, I do as well. I don't, I'm enjoying it while it's lasting. Don't don't drag it out. What they need to do. I mean, if they don't have the vows and the in sickness and in health, then. I'd, sorry, I'd give me a job writing for Coronation Street because they need to have a line where and one Emma of the goes, other is saying it and, and Emma's like, oh, no. Oh, but it's not really sickness, is it, Curtis? It's not really sickness. What do you mean, Emma? What's wrong? Oh, Dad, he's been lying the whole time. I can't do it. And Amy goes, yay, he's an <laughs> asshole. Run away. It's the church, Amy. You can't say that. But he goes... Shut up, you little <laughs> scrote. You can't say that in the church. Uh, Jesus weeps. Yeah, I, I bet there has absolutely got to be something to do with the sickness and the health line next week. But, um, Who says yeah. it all first? Is it the lady? I thought the man said it first. Because, But that's him saying it to her. Yeah, I will look but after then, you, Emma. And, and then she and has to say it yeah. to him. Yeah. And she'll be like, well, if it's real sickness. <laughs> yeah, and then he'll go. But Emma, I'm sick in the head. <laughs> um, uh, uh, do you think Amy will will keep quiet? Oh, it's, if she tells Tracy, the whole thing's off. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Once, once Tracy, if Tracy knows and Steve knows, if if 
then it the will spread is, like wildfire. Like, best friend in the world, Amy is very young, and when you're young, you under you un- you you obviously you know, you know you know stuff, but you don't fully get like what it does a life married to somebody actually mean if you know before you're getting married to them that they have a mental disorder mm. that they're not really that bothered about treating which is causing abuse to you mm. you know what i mean yeah like she doesn't really understand that emma would then be tied to this guy until i t- you know she she's she's pretty switched on Amy is. I know. I'm not trying to denigrate young people, but I'm saying the older you get, the more you begin to get a different perspective on what life really is and how long it is and what how you can mess it up. Mm. You know, because when you're young, you think there's loads of time. If I make a mistake, it won't matter. The older you get, the more you think, yeah, that was actually a bad move. <laughs> yeah. I'm still paying for it now. So the other thing is, if Emma does get married to, to Curtis and then Tracy or Steve or anybody really finds out that Amy knew, I wonder what they would say about that. Like, you probably, you probably should have told me, love. I know, but that's why you can't... That's why, you know, that, that just demonstrates, doesn't it, that Amy's not really mature enough to understand that she mm. should have told somebody. Yeah. I'm not blaming her. I'm, you know, I'm I'm fairly old now, but I know I'm still stupid. <laughs> when I get to 60, then maybe I'll be clever. Then you'll be finally reach wisdom. Yeah. Shall we... Um, sp- Don't you think? Do you not think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I look back at myself, you know, 10 years ago, I think, oh, that's a stupid idiot. <laughs> so now, hopefully, in the future, I'll be even cleverer hopefully. than I am now. Hopefully. I, I, I'm just, I'm glad that Amy got... A bit of a time in the spotlight. I, love I do that like scene. Amy. I really like she Amy and Emma to together. This, yeah. They were a really great sisterly couple. I, I know like... we used to like the the Battersby trio, um, but since um, Eva's gone, the fun kind of disappeared from that a little bit mm. because people keep dying and being. They, sad. they don't have enough of Emma and Amy together. But Emma and Amy together so because I they're younger. That they did it, and they and they want to engage in more stereotypical like sister mm. fun things. I think it's very cute. Mm. Right, Smoke, Smoke and Maria is talking about the wise women of Weatherfield. Maria <laughs> and her um, campaign to well, it's, it's not just she's this week. She's also going to solve homelessness as well as um, I the to environment, kill Maria isn't today. she? I mean, this week. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm thinking. Would would this story have been better with Toya? It would have pursued her personality more, but I think it would have dragged Toya down no, a little bit. I think Maria's. Maria and Sally are in- intrinsically ridiculous, aren't they? Mm. Um, and Toya doesn't have that element of farce in her personality. Maria doesn't so much, she, although she has been uh, well, kind of nutty that time in the past. she was crawling around on the floor with a lion's costume on. Yeah, but she she is the straight man in this um I don't know that she is. Pairing. Well, all right, can I tell you what happened? God, yes. On Monday, me. Maria's getting her knickers in a twist because there's the Christmas market, no, Ma- Maria, sorry, Christmas market, she wants to be placed in a certain d- different area. She's selling She's Christmas sell wreaths. wreaths. I don't know who's buying them now. Um, Sally and Maria are going to have a press conference later on today about her electoral, Sally's electoral campaign. And she's like, um, Maria, you can talk about your clear air campaign if you'd like there as well. So Sally's like trying to train her up about <clears throat> how to do a press conference in the bistro. Um, you've also, I don't even I don't, I don't think this is crucial to the plot, but Mary I wrote it donates, down in my notes anyway. Mary donates her mum's old clipboard from vegetable judging competitions during the Falklands War to Maria to help her at the conference. Yeah, keep that in mind, everybody. That's going to that come, might come up <laughs> Tuesday. Maybe. Sally's doing your interview, so she's talking to the um, the journalist, and she's, and she's talking about the ABCs of things she's grateful for. Um, and I can't remember what they were now. No, a well, is she, for... I can't remember. But C is where she stumbled, wasn't she? And Maria's in the background saying, it's clear it, clean air, Sal. You're, you're grateful for clear it, clean air. Everybody has a C word in mind for Sally, but <laughs> you're not allowed to say it. Sally's like, I want to put more letters in the alphabet. That's right. Um, <laughs> because she's saying the things that I'm thankful are shrinking. The world's going to rack and ruin. Ever since my zebra died. <laughs> um, she also manages to diss Maria for... For being one of the unfortunates that Sally wants to help, um, so so Maria feels completely patronised and um, moans at Gary about it later, and he says, "Why don't you just stand against her like you were going to originally?" She's like, "Oh, what a great idea!" Wednesday, Tim is not interested in Sally's speech for her community question and answer survey. 
Um, so she's going to do like, she's going to host a meeting, isn't she, in the bistro later and she's mm. preparing for it. And Tim, as always, a supportive husband, doesn't want to <laughs> know. He's more interested in the moving of the pie stand at I've... the Weatherfield County Urania, didn't they? He had two main concerns this week. One of them was whether there was going to be a pie stand or a tapas bar. At the, at the football stadium. And the other thing was fishing a sandwich out of the bin so he could eat it. <laughs> yeah, wrapped up in foil. <laughs> um, someone comes to the door and they want to talk to Sally because there's a new housing development by the Red Wreck and it's going to be called Beaver's Nook. And if this wasn't a comedy storyline by this point, now it is. She loves the idea. She wants to endorse Beaver's Nook. Um, they're trying to... <laughs> I know, every time they said Beaver's Nook, Nook I was like... Come on. No. Come on. Stop it. Uh, I said to you, and uh, I think Paul, it was said on Facebook as well, that for part of this week, it did felt like the writers thought that they were writing a sitcom and not a soap opera. Yeah, you did say that. And then I... we read somebody else saying exactly the same thing, so he felt yeah. vindicated. It's like there's there's comedy and there's like, I'm going to make every line and every, you know, every utterance that this character says an attempt to be hilarious. I don't I'm going to know... put jokes and punchlines and everything in there. It just felt like that a little bit, bit too, too much. Yeah. Like and 90s. just calling it, but yeah, Beaver's Nook, really. Why well, they should call it Fanny's Valley. Yeah. What Same happened, thing, what happened to Fanny? Nobody Ga- knows. No, Gail and, Gail and George, Beloved long lost. ancestor. Yeah. Right, so um, she she's excited about this um, because this guy's like, oh, we're selling up. The editor of the Gazette's even bought one of these properties, and so he's like, oh, and he and then and then the man says, maybe I can get you tickets to the Weather County Christmas party. So Tim's suddenly interested. Um, he comes into the pub and he talks about this development to Fizz and Maria. And Fizz says, that's the last bit of green space left on the Red Wreck. Maria's like, oh my God. I feel really bad for the Red Wreck at the moment. It seems to be completely being bulldozed. And I know. And we're not even getting to see any of it. It did feel a and bit... No, nobody cares. Ever since they mentioned this bypass on the Red Wreck, it's been about five people that have shown it any interest. Yet this is the community green space that Weatherfieldians have done, you know, done their walks and their... You Got know, mugged on, done yeah, drugs. Yeah, exactly. Where are they going to loiter menacingly? It's like, oh, we got we got Victoria Gardens now. We've got... We've got the we've got Memorial Square Memorial of, Garden. of green space. We don't need the red rack. It's just so handy right around the corner. Why Why didn't we sit on this before? Because it's always been here on I Victoria know, yeah. Street. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maria finds Sally and moans at her about um, Fanny Valley. And Sally stands her ground. And then Maria tells her that she's going to stand against her for counsel. So they have an argument. Maria says, look, I might not be the ideal candidate, but at least I've got principles. And you, Sally, are your as bad as Ray and Debbie. When I... they were doing their um, building at the hotel The thing is, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit conflicted here because I hate Maria, but she's kind of right. But she also don't. I don't think she knows what she's talking about. She is right, but she's just coming across as sanctimonious and dull. And I'm still yeah. every time she opens her mouth to talk about the environment, even though she's been doing this for two, three months now. I'm thinking, Shut up. you don't really care about it, no, do you, you don't. Maria? It seems to be just the new fad that you're interested in. I know. Um, just because Liam had a coughing fit once. I know. I also think she's incompetent, and I don't think that she could actually stop this from happening. If if you got Sally to stop it, she's got a bit of clout. Sally, Sally actually knows what to do and how to get it done. I know that Maria organised the um, Christmas market really quickly, but I just think somehow that just happened by accident. I just yeah. don't believe in her competency. She just seems very thick. She, she, I know she just doesn't Sally's, seem as uh, in, not informed exactly... about politics as you would need to be to be doing this. Sally's not like a Mensa candidate or anything, but at least she's switched on. Mm. I just think Maria just seems a bit thick. Yeah. She, she, she doesn't seem... Nothing seems, wrong with being Doesn't thick. seem suitable. Just, I'm, I just don't want to vote for you. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, who 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 do I want to win in this storyline? Wow. And, and, and Sally is clearly being painted as the villain, but not in a, you know, in a ma-ha-ha sort of way, because we're also supposed well, to be laughing at her because of the silly funny things arse. that she says. Exactly, which is, which is all, as always, entertaining to watch. And also... But if Maria wins, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, shut up. Also, the other thing is, I'm not really sure what Sally stands for. Do um, you? She keeps going about values and local yeah. community and stuff, but that doesn't mean anything. Whereas she at least she Maria, knows the right buzzwords, doesn't she? Li- yeah, but at least Maria's like, this, like, I've got two things. 
I can't remember. What and the... this, the second thing I'm very passionate about, and it's been my lifelong goal <laughs> since yesterday when I met a homeless person. Yeah. Because I didn't actually realise that people didn't have houses. <laughs> so I can't remember what you remember Sir Sally's um, electoral poster when she was running for mayor with like, the, the teal background. It's like for the people or something yeah. that it says on there. It was very, yeah, very it's vague. Generic. To, yeah. And she also, um, had this week, has cited Nelson Mandela. And Margaret Thatcher as like her political inspiration, which yeah. is like the most. I think it's supposed to be deliberately ridiculous. You couldn't get more poles apart, Obviously. but it doesn't really help us to understand. See, this is the thing. Do you remember when everyone was having a go at me because I said that labels actually are quite useful to understand who you are and who's oppressing you, and like to explain yourself to somebody in a very succinct and simple way. Mm. And maybe you don't completely fit into the the box that, you know, the label is on, but it still helps to introduce the concept of what you're about. And mm. it was like, no, no, labels are rubbish. Is she a Tory or is she <laughs> Labour or is she a Lib Dem? Like that all, would be helpful like all to know. Street political candidates, she's independent. I know, but Maria and Sally are going to split the independent vote. Yep. They can't both be independent. No. Well, isn't well they, isn't they will be, with, but in um, real life, they that would be the, the shortcut to both of them losing. I can't remember what happened when it was Audrey versus Spider, and it was only recently on ITV3 that that happened as well, but I can't remember whether I he think was she representing gave up. the Green Path. No, no, she didn't. They, Oh no, she 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 there won. There have been lots and lots of elections where we need to do that as a feature discussion. We do, point, don't we? I've got a few ideas for new concepts oh, for have you. Oh, save them for the new year. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna forget what they are. Great, write them down. Right, Thursday, Sally's doing a question and answer session in the bistro. She's doing a Zoom call and she's filled the room for some reason with people that hate her and Tim, which I think is included it in It was that. literally Bernie, Tim and Maria were the only and people Fizz? that bothered showing up. Oh yeah, Fizz. Fizz doesn't hate and they're her. All, but they're all heckling her and making fun of she her. She was a little bit, yeah. And and then they uh, go tying into what I was saying about isn't her isn't this ha ha isn't this a sitcom? She's able she gets herself stuck on a stupid filter on Zoom, doesn't she? But... Yeah, but that was kind of funny. <sighs> was she was donut or something? I can't I remember. Don't remember. It remind, it was obviously a reference I'm to not that a cat. that guy <laughs> who's like stuck as a cat. I love it. What world do we live in? Right. So. Um, she Maria's trying to ask questions and Sally's not calling on her until eventually um, she, eventually she, she's asked the other three people in the room so she kind of got no yeah. choice but to ask Maria, Maria. says didn't, didn't you used to be the mayor and go to prison and Sally's like yeah but I was acquitted so what about what she should have said was what about you Maria didn't you go to prison after you married that foreign person just to get him a visa hmm? and you're there sitting next to Fizz having a little laugh at me didn't she go to prison as well because she was involved in John Stapes murder so you've got <laughs> Maria went to prison Fizz went to prison Sally went to prison Sally went to prison Tim's in the room he's been to prison his daughter's been to prison yeah um, who was the other person Bernie Bernie I bet she's been inside <laughs> The whole room is full of so felons. That, that, that question wouldn't actually work. Well, it didn't actually... If they wanted to uh, bring all that up, but they didn't. Sally seemed to handle it pretty well. She did, Maria she did. didn't think that she did, but I think she managed to to, to style it out. Yeah, then, so. supportive Tim says, Excuse me, are you going to support the pie stand at the Weatherby County Grounds? And Sally just closes the laptop and walks off. So everyone on Zoom... It's, oh, it's over now. Everyone on Zoom's like, Oh my God, this awful <laughs> happened. <laughs> Is or the, there's a power cut again. The bistro have been hit by a tram again, and like it was 11 <laughs> years ago. Oh, anniversary almost. So anyway, Sally gets mad at home later because she got made a fool of, and she's going to get the community behind her by hook or by crook, and Maria had better not stand in her way. So on Friday, um, Maria, Maria fo- discovers homelessness and decides to ca- bat- battle that as well, as soon as she sorted out the air pollution problem, of course. Gary goes to see Tim... Because obviously these two are the partners of Maria and Sally, so they, you know, they're united in hating the fact that their their wives and girlfriends are asking them to support them in something <laughs> for once, as they're cooking their teas. Um, so actually, Gary is being a sneak, isn't he? He's yes. trying to work out. He's trying to spy on him. Um, Tim is eating the sandwich out of the bin and then runs upstairs to go to the <laughs> toilet. And <laughs> while he's on sandwich? the phone, Gary's tra- phoning. While he goes upstairs, Gary phones Maria to tell him secrets that Tim has just told him. But Tim was actually double-crossing him to to out him as a spy. 
So Gary says, sorry, look, I don't want this to get between our friendship, which obviously we've all loved and enjoyed Gary and Tim's oh, yeah. friendship over the Inseparable years. Inseparable Gary and Tim. Um, Maria just wanted to get some info. So they agree to go down the pub and have no politics. Um, or, or Oasis talk. Because... One of them's Team Noel and one of them's Team Liam, and I don't know which one's which. I can't remember, but there was that Noel um, little words on the on the shelf behind one of them, wasn't there, the other day? And I didn't know whether that was a bit of subliminal, uh, subliminal messaging there. Which team are you team on? Noel. I don't. Which one's the one that? I don't like Oasis because they were the enemies of the Spice Girls back See, in the middle nineties. Anywhere... You remember the Brits, Malsey, Liam? Come and have a go. You think you're loud enough? See, I'm from the south, so actually, my perspective was it was Blur versus Oasis. Yeah, pretty, that, that was pretty much. The yeah, I don't thing. think it, the Spice Girls really were the <laughs> serious competition for Oasis. Yeah, anywhere north, anywhere south of I don't know, mm, what's it called? Birmingham. Birmingham is team oasis or blur but up in manchester it's team noel or liam yeah is that right do you reckon i I think so yeah anyway um i don't know whether it says something about their personalities which ones they picked or if it was random because i can't i know one of them is a bit of an asshole i think but i think the other one's an asshole as well (laughs) yeah why do people get involved in it just listen to the music i think the more you know about the people who create stuff you like the less you like the stuff (laughs) Anyway, in the pub later, Maria's trying to canvas James to be on her, his her side because obviously he plays for Wembley. Celebrity endorsements. He's there poking at a hot pot that he apparently enjoyed. Um, so she comes. He comes over. She comes over to him. And says, "Oh, can you endorse me for local politics? Because I know that they're doing something with the weather, <sighs> green spaces or whatever." And he's like, "No, I've been specifically told none of us are allowed to." No participation in any campaigns related to local developments. Which is very specific. Well done, James. I'm surprised he wasn't just like looking on the back of his hand because as he had, we had to write it down. Yeah, just I Just to know. remind himself. No. It says... I, 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 just football. football <laughs> Sorry, <only>. so, sorry, Maria. <laughs> um, Maria. Maria then asks Phil to look into this. I don't know why this... Phil's there. Her. Phil's, Phil's on, well, it's on the council, remember. <sighs> what? I was just trying to work out. I was like... Why does Phil take orders from Maria? And then like, oh yeah, Maria is Fizz's friend. And Fizz and Maria and Fizz and Phil going out. Okay. Because if I was Phil, I'd be like, no. <laughs> Gary and Tim turn up, turn up at the pub. And it turns out the spying was Gary's idea. And Gary bribes him with a hot pot and tells him to keep his mouth yeah, Gary's shut. Gary's idea and not Maria's idea. Because Gary says to Tim, Maria told me to go and have a spy. So that's well, I've that just goes. said it was Gary's idea, but yes. you mean it was Maria's idea. No, 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 it was Gary's idea. Gary said it was Maria's idea originally, but then in this scene he says, no, you're right, it's my idea. Well, because then Maria why... said... It doesn't really matter. Maria said what? It doesn't really matter. Maria, Ma- nothing. Maria didn't say anything. Well, I don't understand that. It, it doesn't, doesn't make matter. sense. It doesn't matter. Right. So I ran a poll on our Facebook, our uh, Twitter, I mean, um, to see who our... Was it as hotly contested as my... Michael versus George poll of who can do the best Rovers recreation in Animal It was Crossing. very tight. Was it? Yeah. Um, we had 124 votes. Oh, that's more than mine. And it was 53.2 huh. to 46.8. That is close. Who do you think won? I think I might have seen this. It was Maria, wasn't it? It was Sally. Oh, good. See, I'm for Sally just because I think Maria's a little uppity upstart. I don't want Maria to be the mayor, the, not the mayor, the councillor. I don't, I don't want Maria to be in it. Really, she's kind of dull. I think I, the reason Maria, that Sally was great as a councillor, and, I, and I think there's still some yeah, more great Sally's material more to get funny. out of that concept. Sally's much funnier, and I really like. I know. I think people probably think I'm being a bit elitist and cruel to say that she, that Maria is thick, but the evidence is right in front of your face. Because she didn't even consider or think about homelessness as an issue until she saw a literal homeless man <laughs> in front of her face. And she was like, oh, there's been a rise in homelessness. What, from zero to one? <laughs> yeah, that is quite, statistically, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I, I just think that the, the storyline-wise, I can't see any benefit of Maria winning this election. I don't need no, to see her Maria's be a counsellor. Maria's not that fun. She's not a fun character. And she's and she's she is so sanctimonious now. She is such a. I have not seen a single thing or seen where she has done or said anything that indicates that she's taking it seriously. That she needs to cut air pollution, 
or she's willing to inconvenience herself in the slightest bit. Oh. I know that there was that thing where she said she was going to sell her car. Has she sold her car? Or did she just say that she was going to sell her car? I think that when she talks about it, and I, I believe her, I think she sounds quite serious No, about hang on. It. I just think it's not... No, 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 no. I'm quite serious about a lot of things that have nothing to do with me and I don't have to put any input into them. But as soon as I'm the one that's having to do it, I'm suddenly <laughs> less interested. And I think that's Maria down to a T. She needs to put her money where her mouth is. She needs to actually go around. And I also want to point something else out. Local politics is obviously a very... Um, effective way of uh, pushing your agenda and uh, getting change Mm. but you don't have to be a politician to do things on the ground level in your community if she was really serious she would form some kind of action group or do you know do anything rather than sitting around with a thumb up her ass waiting for a surprise by-election to be <laughs> to, to be sprung because somebody had a heart attack or whatever. To be fair, up until recently, she was being Sally's wingman, wasn't she? It's I mean, only been she, in the last few but days. But she hasn't she done anything. Know. All she's doing is moaning at people and telling them to get electric cars. She's got lots Can of I hairdressing just... to do, to be fair. She's just not done anything. I just find... I think she's sanctimonious and I think that she's trying to make it other people's problem... And she's not doing anything about it herself. I would be, I would be behind her more if she said something. And maybe it's just a script writing problem. They haven't put it in or whatever. She said anything because the other problem is also this is giving the impression to people watching that you can't do anything about it either. What can you do? Mm. Run for election? Well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, she could say something like, "Do you know what, Sally? You you seem to think that it's impossible that we can do anything about." The, the air pollution around here. But since I decided that I care about it, I have not driven my car to the shop in a month. Yeah. I've walked to the local shop and I've bought things there and I've cut out the emissions from my car. Mm. That's one concrete thing that she could say that she has done. Do you understand yeah, what yeah, I'm trying to I get do. Of course at? I do. I'm just thinking, as, I'm just kind of thinking what's, what's likely to happen in the future and I can't see them bypassing through the red wreck. No, they're not they're going, not to, going to, are to do they? that. Which would suggest that Sally's campaign isn't going to win and Maria will be the one I to know, stand in front I'm... of the bulldozer or whatever and it's going to make it not happen, which is a bit disappointing, really, because, yeah, no way is a red wreck going. And there's also seems to be, there's something dodgy going on with Weddy County, isn't there? Like, are they planning to move grounds to this new green space? The last, they're going to move to, to this bit on the red wreck? And that's why James isn't allowed to do anything about it. Well, yeah. Is that why the pie stall situation actually doesn't matter in the end? So but... I, th- I think there's going to be some kind of corruption thing there. And I think maybe even we have um, Tim switching to Maria's side because that's very much well, in his character yeah, exactly. to not support Sally. Traitorous And I arsehole. think if, if he finds out for whatever reason that, you know, Weddy County is going to move not grounds and he doesn't like that or, or whatever, yeah, he's going to be like, oh, I don't want the, yeah, I don't want the stadium there. Um, Sally, you're you're supporting this move, and your beaver's nook. I'm not any, having anything to do with this. Speaking of that, I did think that um, that that was particularly in character for Sally to um, be convinced by this property development because we know that she's very interested in uh, yeah uh, mo- moving up to. I know he said places. he was called Fanny Valley, but really he should have called it like Cheshire Dales or something. She'd be like, "Oh, Tim, I've always wanted yeah. to live in Little Cheshire. Piece of Cheshire in Bring Cheshire to me instead of the other way around." <laughs> yeah, she she's not going to win, is she, Sally? But um, oh well, oh well. I'm 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 semi enjoying this story. I can't say much more than that. Um, let's do the let's do the summer and Daniel and and also for some reason Audrey and Max and everything story. So we started off the week with the tail end of the Daniel problem because he has Mrs. Crawshaw coming to visit Daniel at home. Remember, not Mrs. Crawshaw, Mrs. Crawshaw. Yep. She says. I've come round your house to be a little bit more casual about this. Um, but sorry, we do need to follow the guidelines. You're not allowed to have any contact with Summer for a little while. Um, there's going to be some restrictions in place, but you just speak to your mentor if, if you've got any questions. I don't, I don't want to lose a teacher like you before you've even finished your training. And at that point, I Michael's was like... Michael's head whips round. Hmm? What's going on? Has he finished his training or hasn't he? He's not training on the job, is he? He's not doing... Because you can get training schemes where you do it on the job. 
but he was doing his PGCE back in the, in January. He should be qualified by this point. I know, and I know, I do know that there have been changes this year to newly qualified teachers, and you're not technically fully fully qualified until two years now after you first start. But the way she was talking, oh, pff, I don't know. I try not to get too involved in that. I can't help it. Anyway, so he's not allowed to speak to Summer. Next scene, Summer tries to speak to him. And he's like, sorry, not allowed to. Walks on. Spray dirt on her face. Meanwhile, back at school, she tries to apologise for Ardy for how she treated him. Because remember when they were dating over the summer? And he's like, sorry, I'm not having any of that. You dumped me because you fancied Mr. Osborne. Um, he's nearly twice your age, love. I'm not, I'm not accepting your apology. <laughs> And then later on, she goes into her English classroom and finds Mr. Osborne, Hart, Summer, graffitied all over the board. That's wrong. It's the other way around. It totally is the other way around. Um, Tuesday, so later on that day, basically, Summer goes back home. And she's, it's, the, the story starts to go, sort of take a turn, doesn't it? And it's about her worried about her looks and appearance. I suppose it's had a, a, no, a little bit this about before. this. No, I said this before. She said she did fan- this before. She, she looks at Daisy's Instagram yeah. a few weeks ago, doesn't she? But it's, it's she's, she's starting to feel that again. Um, and, and she doesn't think she's going to get into Oxford and anything. What, if, what happens if Oxford find out about this? And Billy says, look, don't worry about this. Let's go out for a meal. Let's invite Paul along for some reason. Um, so they're all there. And of course, Daniel and Ken are also there too. Um, and Billy says, Summer, have a dirty burger. Um, and so then that makes Summer feel guilty because she ate too much. She dashes off home, says, oh, I've forgotten my insulin, but actually she wants to go and put her fingers down her throat because this is turning into an eating disorder storyline. Um, but no more about that because Wednesday is when it switches over to more about what Max is getting up to. He's still homeschooling after punching Daniel in the face. Um, and I did quite enjoy the fact that he's written a book report about Downs and Abbey because Gail um, is asked said to it give, was a said it was a classic. classic. Yeah, that was kind of funny. I, I want to know, did he watch the whole series about this? Because that's, that's it would have been isn't faster it? to have watched read a book. Maybe just <laughs> maybe watch just the watch Christmas the movie. Film. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Um, and, and, and and David's struggling as well at this point, isn't he? Despite all the homeschooling that he presumably did during lockdown, he's finding it a bit tough now that Max has had a head swap and personality, personality transplant. And um, But don't worry about that because they get a phone call to say that Audrey's been in a car crash. She comes home later and it's down to this eyesight problems that she's been having uh, recently. Thursday, Sarah and Gail are trying to convince Audrey that, you know, you need to do something about this. We're concerned about your mam. Audrey doesn't want the fuss. She doesn't want to be treated like a child. She's... It's it's really sad, isn't it? Because it's something that you can totally imagine happening to so many people as they get older, worried about, you know, the body giving up on them, losing their independence, and well, especially Audrey. Well, this is making Audrey. me anxious. I mean, a- Audrey's been all about her looks and the, the, the pleasures of life, hasn't she, ever since she's been in the show. And she realised, she's realising more and more now that she's not the spring chicken that she once was. She doesn't even want to wear glasses now. So she's kind of in denial about this. Well, she's depressed because, wouldn't you be, you know, that's now you forever. You're yeah. not going to suddenly gonna get, get younger. you from it. No, no. Um, so Gail says, look, we're going to get you an appointment to the, at, the, um, at the obsessions and we'll see what's what. Um, and Friday, um, Gail has to, you know, cajole her to the opticians because Audrey would rather she's go to the pub. She's too busy boozing in the pub. Yeah. I wonder whether she's becoming an alcoholic. But it turns out, and we don't see the optician scene, we just hear the, the diagnosis, that she has got cataracts. Cataracts? <laughs> cataracts. 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 That's cataracts. Right. Harry Hill fans, we, we remember that. So she's on the waiting list to get them sorted. They says, that's fine. Then they just zap them off then, won't they? No problem there. And Gail says, yeah, but in the meantime, she's going to stay at number eight. Um, it's kind of... Every, every so often they have Audrey stay with them. And I, I want to know whether, whether there's going to be any particular plot reason that's going to require Audrey to stay there. I don't know. But obviously David is not into the idea of sharing with his gran again. Even though, I mean, who's living there at the moment? Because Sarah and Adam have moved out now, haven't they? So there's probably plenty of space there. Plenty of space. Would you like me to tell you how to avoid cataracts, listeners? Yes. Um, it, it, it It's partly very fashionable and partly not fashionable. Mm. You, wear, you have to wear sunglasses and wide-brimmed hats. Fashion. Eat leafy vegetables and fruits. Not fashion. Avoiding smoking. Not fashion. Oh. 
Well, she didn't smoke. She has already ever been a smoker. I can't remember. I don't remember. I think so. But she does seem to me like the sort of woman who avoids smoking, eats leafy vegetables and fruits, and has sunglasses. And I bet wide she loves hats. a big wide ring, floppy hat. So she's a. Well, really, she's too uh, late now. She's probably really drawn the short straw there, hasn't she? Oh, well. Yeah. How could she have worn more hats? You can only wear one at a time. <laughs> she's also got massive hair. Surely that does something to, help, to, to shade the sunlight going into your eyes. Yeah. Oh well. Um, speaking of fashion, this is another funny scene later. Audrey telling Max about the various fashions of the 50s and 60s and the different hairstyles, wasn't it, she? And the, the bobs and the uh, and what have you. And, and, oh, it's so sad and, and that Max, Max is Max doesn't like, care. I, I just wanted to know who shot JFK. <laughs> It was um, the Secret Service agent by accident. Yeah. So she goes off to the Rovers. To I just want to say, what? it's so typical and it's really painful to watch this as somebody who ha- no longer has any grandparents. Of all the times that my, my nans or my granddads would be going, yeah, 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 to me about something and I'd be like, okay, I've heard this about 500 times. But now I wish I I wish they could come back and tell me some stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Max, he's just thinking at the moment because he wants to play his, his online zombie shooting game in, doesn't he? So he tells Audrey, I want to go upstairs and do my homework. Can you leave me some peace, please? So she's any excuse to get over to the Rovers, basically. And um, yeah, he goes off to play his games. David comes into the pub later, finds Audrey there and says, look, I've got a meeting at school tomorrow with Max. And, and, and again, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, the Christmas holidays have started. Is the school really going to be open for David and Max to go and talk about him starting again in January? I'm thinking maybe not. But never mind that. One of the many things that I've had to say never mind about this, uh, this week on Corey. Um, I was hoping, says David, that Max is, I could sort of wave Max's homework under their noses and then they'd instantly snap him back up back to school. And, and now he ain't got none. So what's going to happen here? And that's the end of that story for the week. So he wants Max... He wants Max to go back to school. But he can't because... He can't because he hasn't done his online homework. He hasn't been doing his remote learning. Naughty. Yeah. I don't... I'm not, I'm not particularly fussed about whether Max goes back to school or not, really. Well, I think, you? I think that a uh, thingy is more than you. Yes. But I don't really care whether David cares, either. I'm not really um, invested in David anymore. I'm, I'm, I don't like him at the moment. I know he's not. He's not particularly likable. He's never he's... been like a good year of a character, is he? He's but, always been I mean, interesting. The fact that he hasn't been even nominated for a top lad award after winning it all these years in a row that speaks volumes. Very doesn't worrying. It? I don't. I don't not like David, obviously, but they're just not giving him the right material at the moment or the right lines to deliver it. I think. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I'm not particularly interested in that side of the story. Audrey and her, and her eyesight, are they going to make anything out of this? I don't know. What, do you th- what are you thinking about that? Oh, she's, just, just, it's it makes me feel really sad about how dejected and and worn down she looks. She does. She she's looking old. She looks very old. And I, um, I'm hoping that's because they've... Um, drag Sue Nichols through a few hedges just to get her into into role. I'm hoping character. that she's is not like you know the actress mm. is um, suffering, but um, you know Audrey's always been very sprightly and yeah, and she's always dressed well and looked taken care of herself and she's always very stylish even though she is you know one of the older cast members she, she's don't never think of her noticed as being her no whereas somebody elderly. like Rita she's clearly like she's an old lady now. I know. I think that in my mind, don't let I that have... r- bottle red hair fool you. <laughs> I know. I have this distinction between being old, which is you know just a biological fact of the years yeah. going forwards, and being elderly, which is mm. more of a state of mental and physical. And, decline. and, and it's sad, sad to say that in the past year or so, Ken has also slipped into the elderly category. Just... I don't know. I think he's come bouncing back a bit because he had COVID and. Um, I think he lost a bit of weight in real life. Yeah, yeah, a bit of And weight. he looked a bit more haggard, which I don't normally like talking about, but you brought it up. Um, but I think both of them, you know, they're quite perky, aren't they? They are. I, I, I think so, compared to Rita, and I can't remember what the, the, the different ages of, of the characters are now, I, but... Um... Yeah, I don't. They're, I, they're, it's incredible that they're still going I after know. all these years. Anyway, Obviously, I, there I, is something to I'm be so said. So grateful that Coronation Street has kept both of these actors. actors well, and, and you know, as well, obviously. it's a lesson that we need to learn going forward as a society that's going to age more and more as fewer children are born. 
you know, comparatively speaking to the population, mm. the older the, the population grows, the more that we need to learn how to accommodate people into the workforce who may not necessarily be able to do yeah. exactly the same things as they did when they were 30 years younger, mm. but they're still perfectly capable of doing yeah. what, you know, working yeah. instead and, of and giving people stuff to do that... Yeah. Well, I'm glad that they're giving Sue Nichols and Will Roach something to do because uh, do you remember like in Betty's final years, mm. she was very much, I'm, I'm sitting down at the Rovers sit booth, down sit down and have a moan for a good few years. And that, that was really kind of sad there. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving having both of those in there. Um, I'm wondering whether, you know, is Audrey going to have another accident because she's had two little minor bumps at this point, hasn't she? I'm thinking that surely especially as she's in denial about needing any of this. Yes. I think that maybe something terrible is going to happen. Because she, yeah, gonna she make her realize. doesn't understand. And you don't she just learn... she, she does understand. She just doesn't want to admit it, well, does she? Okay, she, I don't think she understands how to let people take care of her. And I have to say, it's difficult. And But you, like, the younger you learn how to accept help from people when you need it, the less difficult it is when you get to the stage where you can't refuse mm. the help I... nobody wants to be relying on other people no it's a humbling and sad experience but no. you have to get yourself into the headspace and accept it has to happen she just needs to get back into the dating game and find herself a nice young nice, man young rich curtis bloke to, to to look after her curtis could be her personal doctor because it's not like Audrey has completely sworn off men in the 20 years since Alf died, has she? She's, you know, she's she's held a torch for um, for Archie, for example. Um, and, nobody, and others, I'm sure. Nobody around for remember. her. No, there isn't. But I, it, I think it would be quite nice if they could invent a character, especially if they need Get to rejuvenate the Prats in. a little bit. Because, to, to, honestly, I, I don't think that Max or, or Lily are the ones, or Harry other ones to give exciting stories and you know keep keep the the lifeline of the the Platt family going and i know that adding in an an older companion to audrey is only going to keep things going temporarily but i'd rather see more development at that end of the family tree than than down at the roots uh, i don't know i don't know um over to over to summer um what, what do you reckon about this eating disorder story I suggested it, didn't I? We have, yeah, we said a long time um, ago. We said. I don't think, oh, I don't want to get into it because you know, it's meant. It can be mentally damaging for people to listen to things um, that might affect them. You mm. know, I'm hoping that um, Ardy's going to forgive her and uh, that he'll he'll be the one to to help her love herself for who she really is um so. the thing is though michael that's all twee and nice and everything but it's not ardy that's telling her no no i know it's not i know it's, it's not it's so like society and instagram media. culture and people editing photos and you know it's a sh in a way it's kind of, i'm kind of it's it makes sense that she's fixated on daisy but i wish that she would um obsessed with, about somebody who perhaps she doesn't know and then it's sort of revealed that she actually just edits her photos and she doesn't even look like that in real life because mm. it's almost you know so much on instagram and other social media is just edited or bad the other thing is uh, uh you know uh bad bad photos where you know your skin looks perfect because you're your phone doesn't pick up all your spots hmm. or your paws or whatever. Don't believe everything you see. <laughs> I'm just saying. But unfortunately, she knows Daisy in real life, and she knows Daisy that is, what is she actually looks like. does she's, actually she is look pretty like actually that. smoking. Yeah, mm. but you know, Summer's Summer's um got a very nice figure, yeah. but it doesn't really matter That's to her, does it? No, no, it doesn't. What anybody says. The other bit that we had in this story that well, kind of in this story tangentially to it was George trying to find a. Christmas present for Eileen, didn't we? And was it a ma mahogany table he settled on? I think after um, she says that that's what she's always wanted. So I thought they were talking about coffins. Th there was coffin talk in there, but I think she wants a table. So I'm guessing that we're going to see some nice Christmassy George and Eileen scenes, which I think I'm quite looking forward to because they've they've been a couple for a little while. Yet you wouldn't know, would you, from watching the show? No, because they they had that little bit where the the will they won't they, but then. 
yeah, as as was all oft, so often the case in Coronation Street, we don't actually get to see what they're what they're like as a couple. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. On hopefully on Christmas Day. Um, okay, so let's let's do the um, what's been going on in Speed Dial and also with Stu. So Gemma, over to you. So on Monday, Zidane's like, well, that's sorted, isn't it? He's dead now. Yeah. And Ali's like, oh my god. This is why you'd never get into a murder plot with Alia because she's such a flake. <laughs> then he get he's when he's alone in the house he gets a phone call. He sees Alia later. He tells her that's the insurers and they're paying for everything. Right. Phew. But Ali still feels guilty about what happened. Um, it's funny how <laughs> in my head I'm like I'm, I've totally given um, Alia and Zidane a pass for not calling the ambulance immediately for Hashim but for Kelly not calling the ambulance for Seb I'm like she's just she never <laughs> just should be burned in a pit but we liked Seb didn't we that's the difference <laughs> yeah I don't know whether I've held up in court but well it, as it's been pointed out many times it's not illegal to no. not help somebody exactly. in this country um, otherwise the Tory party wouldn't be involved. oh oh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> they're you all didn't. the same they're all the same um <laughs> The Nazirs are cleaning up the mess at Speed Dull. Um, and the second that Zidane's left on his own, his ex-wife appears and her name is... Mariam. Mariam. Not Miriam, as I was writing in my notes. It's Mariam. Mariam, you told me later that week. She has also played a character called Mariam in a different show and I've forgotten what the name of the show was and she was very briefly in Line of Duty, this actress. Oh. Um, so she comes downstairs and she's like, what's going on? My brothers have been arrested for arson. About, you've written. Nice and about, yeah. Cheese day. Uh, Zidane, Zidane says, oh, I'm sorry your dad died. Um, they talk about Hashim's motives and she's like, oh, it must have been revenge for, for you being a dirty dog. Stealing uh, his money. Later. Treating me bad. Yasmin and Ali are reflecting about what's happened. They're glad it's over. Looking forward to the future. Yasmin feels guilty about how she treated Stu. Then Zidane comes in with Ma- Mariam and... Um, it becomes apparent that I don't think anyone in Zidane's family's met her, which is weird. Didn't they? I don't. I think Zidane. Yeah, they did think, because Alia. Well, Alia recognised her. I well, thought. I don't think that Yasmin had met her before, but maybe I'm misremembering. I don't think that Yasmin went to the wedding. I think that she was too busy being under Jeff's thumb. Oh, okay. So um, Alia can't believe. Zid- oh yeah, I think I was thinking about that, wasn't mm. there? Um, Alia can't believe Zidane is ma- keeping Mariam around after they killed her dad and everything. Um, Wednesday, Yasmin goes groveling to Kelly to try to find out where Stu is so she can forgive him. Kelly's not playing ball. Um, uh, Zidane tries to appeal to Kelly's better nature and give Yasmin a break. She says, oh, I'll think about it. Um, I'll let I'll let Stu know. And then uh, Mariam, meanwhile, is trying to work out paperwork or whatever there's, she's there's just uh, over the course of those first few episodes of the week Zidane yeah. isn't trying to hurry Mariam out of his life so there's the, um, they're, but they're the insinuation that like, maybe they're going to be some kind of reunion they'll get close enough for her to be offended when it finds out that he killed her dad he didn't kill her dad I kind of want her to take him back off to Portugal or wherever it was that I they know, were married such a grumpy I, I'm not really invested in him. the slightest uh, that um, in Zidane being back in the show and I was, I was quite excited to hear that he was coming back because he yeah, was just such always a, a bit grumpy. Grump. To be fair, he always he was, was a bit, grumpy. but he's turned it up to the max this time. Wow, he's that got a lot of burdens on his shoulders. <laughs> on Thursday, Stu comes to see Yasmin. She apologises. He says he's just Peter's just be he won't forgive her really. He's just saying, Well, you're not the first person to say it and you won't be the last. Everyone just thinks I'm dirt because I'm homeless. Later, Zidane tells Merriman about how much he hates himself for what he's done. She's like, oh, I don't hate you. Blah, 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 blah. On Friday, this is when Maria learns about homelessness when she finds Stu sneaking out of Trim Up North because um, Kelly's been sneaking Kelly him in there to in. sleep. Yeah, she Kelly finds Stu in the gardens. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. It was nice for a few weeks, but I'll be fine. There were, were there any particular consequences of that, Maria? Or does Maria like? Huh. It's a homeless the guy. Maria's Has like, it... we need to solve anyway, the problem of homelessness after I've solved air pollution. I just don't think that... Did, did Kelly get into trouble for, no. for letting him stay, stay in there? Well, no, Gary and, Gary and Maria were just saying to her... Because obviously, Gary will try to give her whatever she wants. 
really. Mm. But they were just saying, look, we literally can't have this guy staying here overnight because of insurance and who knows what's going to happen. It's not really set up for somebody. You know, what if there was a fire and he was locked in, he'd just die, wouldn't he? Yes. You know, there are many other reasons like that that you can't just have homeless people living in your (laughs) business. Um, So she gets all in a huff and really annoys me. Like Sally, um, Kelly is being sanctimonious as well about this. It's very irritating. I know. She, she and Maria should have a smug off, shouldn't they? I know. I just don't know what the solution is here because Stu's being depicted as a person who has fallen into homelessness because he lost his job. Yeah. Well, there are other, you know, I've said this before on the show previously, there are other reasons why somebody could become homeless and it's a lot more complicated of an issue than simply here's some money and here's a house. Mm. You're sorted. If it was that easy, nobody would be homeless, would they? No. Then, then that's a fact. And I, know, and I know people think there's, you know, there's some kind of conspiracy or hatred or, you know, people are doing it on purpose, but it's a lot more complicated Mm. For some people who have substance abuse and other things and issues or mental problems, there should be there needs to be a different kind of support network for those people that isn't the same for people. All, all, they all have different needs, but Stu's case seems to be relatively simple to me. I don't know how much Kelly's getting paid for her job. I can't be mine. She's only like. I know she's only stuff, a sweeper. She? Making the things. tea. I'm just thinking to myself, what is she? Is she a student? I think so. I'm really. I mean, str- she, I'm sure she she was at school, wasn't she? And she's and not she went got to prison. Any... <laughs> I don't think she's remembered to I go also, back to school like, again. There's since. obviously no money left from Rick. her parents. I just think. I just honestly think Stu seems to me to be the sort of bloke who literally, if you gave him a grand. He'd be sorted out. He could put some money down as a deposit on a flat, get a job, and he'd be back on his feet. Mm. Well, we'll, we will find out because he does have a job at the end of the week, doesn't he? I know, but that's what I'm just thinking. I just think if Kelly said to Gary, I just need, can you just lend me some money to give to Stu? Mm. I just, you know, it just feels to me like it's one of these snap your finger homeless problems where it really doesn't reflect real people's situations that are far more complicated well, Stu is a very charming chap, isn't he? I'm sure well, he can talk his I mean. way quite quickly into a job. I understand they're trying to build, you know, they're making a sympathetic person because people can be very cruel, homeless people. I just think it's unfortunate that they, they're not very good at depicting the real issues about why homelessness is so yeah. difficult to deal with. <sighs> right, so... She finds uh, she goes to the gardens, doesn't she? Because well, she's trying to get she yeah she she chases she, after yeah him. she he says don't worry about me. Then she goes and asks Billy for help, and he says I'll ask some shelters, and shelters are another difficult thing because they have all these rules and you know they're used to dealing with all kinds of different people, so they're quite harsh. You know, Stu Stu's not the sort of doesn't seem to be the sort of person who needs somebody to tell him you have to be here at nine o'clock at night otherwise we're going to lock you out you're not allowed to you know don't drink or do drugs it's like he doesn't need to be told this but some people who use the same facilities might need a bit more supervision so i don't think a shelter is necessarily what he needs he needs somewhere to live and and a job Mm. i can't believe he's been homeless on this show with all these bloody do-gooders you can't move for falling over people <laughs> on the street who are willing to do everything and anything except actually do solve the issue well Stu's just too darn humble about it he's like oh don't worry about oh, me oh everyone hates homeless people I wouldn't expect anything I'll be more fine. from you you know where's Sean where's Mr MLM I used to be homeless I care about it mm. Everybody well, cares so much, when, when, but not at all at the same because time. Because later on, Yasmin offers Stu a room in a, her well, house, doesn't she? Because um, y- Kelly kind of organises a peace treaty yeah. between them. And Yasmin says, yes, come deliver me at number six. He's like, no, I don't want to. And I'm like, well, well Stu, come on, Stu. Yeah, this is kind of annoying. I thought I thought so. I think he's being a bit of an he arsehole. Was, he was, yeah, he was he's revelling trying to protect, in his homelessness. <laughs> he's trying to protect his his ego. Yeah, he was. And that's he was just wrong, very, that's very wrong, proud I'm trying to think of a word... You don't have a lot left when you're homeless, but self-respect and not being patronised and not being made to feel like, oh, you know, all he doesn't want to be a burden. On the head. Well, not that. It's just, you know, like I, the beneficent, magnificent Yasmin, 
will bestow on you because of my guilty conscience. Mm. You know, he's got more self-respect that to say, you know, I'll come crawling. Thank you so much. Yeah, he says. Grand well, he, he says, doesn't he? I'm not. I'm not going to do this just to make you feel better about yourself or the way you treated. Me. I understand. I understand that impulse. That's a very human impulse. But at the same time, he's being an asshole <laughs> and he's not helping himself. And it's another example of like literally a homeless person like Dorothy with the with the shoes. All you have to do is click your feet together. Is that? And um, you'll be taken home again. <laughs> do you see what I mean? Yes. That's not the case. <laughs> anyway, he comes back later with flowers for Yasmin and says, okay, sorry, I was um, being an ass. I'll take you up on the offer, but you better get the a vacuum cleaner up because <laughs> it's out and make sure everything's clean. A clean home is a happy home. <laughs> um, also, I'm going to eat your chickens as a joke. <laughs> um, I'm going to lock you in a box. Oh, I'm just joking. Why are you so mad? Yeah, she gets freaked out by this, panics, says, like, I can't do this, and runs away. And Ali's like, oh, that might have been a bit of a trigger, what that you just said. That might have been said. a bit jeffy, what you just yeah. said there. I, I don't, don't think know this you... is going to work out. <laughs> she was abused by an evil man. Um, I think you just triggered her. Why can't he just lock himself in the orangery and pee in a bucket? Um, what, what, did you mean, what, what is it that Yasmin called it? An orange peeler or something? She called it earlier this uh, week. Yeah, that's There's what... no oranges there. Well, also, she was mad because Zidane let... Mary, Mary around, and yeah. she said there were there were um, there were cobwebs everywhere, and then she ran in to dust them after Mary had already seen them. Which is <laughs> so very... under Jeff's regime, that never would have happened. Say what you like about him, he ran a tight ship. He did. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, she's like, you can't move in, um, but would you like a job? And you don't burn down the restaurant this time. <sighs> Yasmin also tells Kelly she should be proud of herself. And Ardy's like, hooray, everyone's finally accepting you because yeah. you've helped a man, you've killed a man. She's gonna, Kelly's going to be the next recipient of the Weatherfield God, Good Samaritan Award, isn't she? You can see it coming. You just imagine the speech as well. What a turnaround. The beginning of the year, she's kicking a man to death. The end of the year, she's saving a man from homelessness. <laughs> wow, amazing. I wish the Queen was here. She'd be so proud of you. I, th- I thought it was funny that Ardy said, oh, the whole street's accepting you now. It's like, no, a couple of people have. Probably the rest of the street don't care. Probably but most of them don't know who you are. Yeah. The rest of them don't care. And I think also, um, Kevin is still keeping Abby in the house. So that she doesn't see her. Oh yeah, Abby came back on Friday, didn't she? Abby we didn't, and didn't mention Kevin. that. Abby and Kevin are back off the honeymoon. I was like, yeah. happy. I love Abby. Oh, yeah. I don't know what she's up to. Well, is it, is it going to come out about her and Imran over Christmas? Oh, I don't know. It seems it's a like, nice Christmas Day revelation. Like well, they need to have something, don't they? They've well, got a, got a week. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Because then we get to see hopefully Toya and Imran at Christmas time. Last year they had a baby. I oh, know they did, didn't they? Um, so Stu, when is Stu going to die of this I mysterious know, this cough. consumption that he's got, like some kind of Victorian waif? Yeah, he's um, he's really stringing this out, isn't he? He's been a bit of a coffin dodger. Don't worry about me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got to be something. So is he going to? Is he going to be found dead on Christmas I Day? I can't believe. Is Yasmin going to be? Oh, if I did, I, if I did, I did, I react that way. If he was living with me, he wouldn't be dead now. I don't. I know. would love that. A really nice, beautiful Christmas Day corpse. Mm. Frozen corpse. I floating I just down Weatherfield Canal. Can't believe that he went to hospital and th- it didn't come up. Yeah. They're just He's like, in oh, there well, for coughing. They're like, well, old. we're not going to look into this because we, you're probably coughing because you were in a fire. Is it? Maybe he's just had COVID and it's... Uh... He said it's not contagious. Oh, no, no, yeah, it didn't. No, no, but it might be like after effects of it. Long COVID. Yeah, like long COVID, maybe. I'm one of those I ones think... that had COVID when it first came out. Yeah, so... I had it when it was cool. Yeah. I, I think that they're dragging it out too long. Like when, they, when you have a little mystery like this, I, as, as a viewer, I feel that I should be um, be satisfied. My, my curiosity you? should be... Um... Sated yeah, immediately. Uh, well, not immediately, but he's been coughing for about a month or so now. Well, the thing is, I feel that whatever this is, it's going to be fatal. Unlike Curtis, there's actually something wrong with him. If it just turns out that he's just got a bit of a cough. Maybe just the actor had a cough when they were filming it. Yeah. To keep it in, it makes it feel more it's authentic. Too, make us feel sorry for you more. It's too significant and it's been brought yeah. up too much for it to be nothing. Hmm. And he obviously knows what it is. I think so. I think so. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I saw some people online wondering whether like a romance between Yasmin and Stu could be on the cards. I'd quite like it because I, li- I, I like him. I just wish that he didn't have I just don't this think cough because it's put a dampener on it. Yes, yeah, well, no, it's put a, 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 a time a, limit. A time limit on him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think Yasmin and and um, Stu Stu have anything in common. When or any that kind, stop no Corey kind of. Characters I just together. can't literally see them together. <laughs> He's a nice guy. That's He's all a she nice needs. guy, but so what? He's a good cook. So what? So you can. So it's Gordon Ramsay, but I'm not going to marry him, am I? <laughs> um, Can't have you... two people swearing all day long. Any um any any thoughts about Mariam? Seems fairly she standard seems like side a sweet character, doesn't little she? Little Disney princess kind of a lady, doesn't she? She's got a very sweet face. She does, yeah, yeah, but um. Not not much to say about her personality at the moment. Can't because see... it's tied up to the Zidane storyline, which I'm still not particularly interested in. She obviously likes stern men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. She likes some stoic, does yeah. marry him. I like a man that just stares at me like a llama. Yeah, well, like, like she, her dad was quite um, you know, the serious type, wasn't he? So mm, maybe very she, serious. Maybe Zidane reminds her of a of a younger Hashim. Well, I would say Zidane reminds me of a llama. A llama. Yeah, blank stare and a bad haircut. <laughs> Speaking of haircuts, I can't take my eyes off Gary's either. Like that. He must have really cold head. <laughs> I know, we started commenting more on how people look and I don't well, like people it. people having funny haircuts. I know. I, do, I said this to you, Michael, yesterday. I don't think it is funny haircuts. I think we've aged out of hair. <laughs> but we're just watching it going, what are these young That's people? That's short Mind back you, and sides. How old is Gary? He's not that much younger than us. Um, he's not the he's same age. age. Yeah, he's our I think, age. But I think it's all driven by TikTok these <laughs> days. I think if you're on TikTok, you're in and you understand that actually having shaved head and like a big floof on the top is actually very cool. <laughs> Okay. I don't. I still have no explanation for what Zidane's got on his head, though. No. Right, Sarah, Lid, yeah, yes, and the mystery Lid. kid, yeah. yeah. So I quite enjoyed this. So we had this Lydia back, who was uh, we saw in the factory last Friday, who is played by Rebecca Ryan, that's Jack James Ryan's sister. And I forgot to mention that on the podcast last week because I saw on, um, I think it must have been on Instagram, like. On, on before the episodes last Friday Jack had put on oh my sister's going to be on it tonight and I forgot to look out for her and it was only after we'd recorded the podcast and after we watched the episode so I was like oh the, that must have been her but yes if you are you haven't heard this already then the actress who plays Lydia is Rebecca Ryan and she is famous for being under other things as well and I think she's quite good I don't know whether she doesn't feel like a a, a long term character or anything but I am enjoying that she's a bit of a friend to Sarah Louise at the moment and if there's one thing that characters on Coronation Street are short of it is friends so um, Monday then we start off with um, Adam coming into the factory um, I can't remember how it comes up but he's basically bragging about how many women he bedded over the years hasn't he he says my nickname used to be Flora because I spread myself around too much I hate people that are like this I, I don't, don't get it it just makes me think you're a pervert and you've probably got some some disease <laughs> i don't i don't want to be you know sex shaming or anything like that but oh, we're, bru- we're just prudes we're british aren't we come on <laughs> i i also just i i don't i don't no i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i just I don't, don't think it's like appeal. i really it's like oh, but also... lots of people <laughs> yeah that's very sweet of you it just it just makes you one's enough for me <laughs> you can only shag one at once well like, let me tell you actually that's not true um <laughs> this is getting rude well i just think I adam's had some i do i just time. i don't think it impresses as many people as it's supposed to when no. somebody says i'm a right shagger like i mean it's you know if you're if you're sex positive Really, it's like going. Oh, I've had so m- like I've I've eaten so many sandwiches in my life. It's like, like so what? Who cares? Nobody's interested in the amount of sandwiches you've eaten. Tell me about a particularly good sandwich that you had, maybe that I can make myself. But other than that, keep it to yourself. It doesn't endear me to him in the slightest. Well, this is what I'm saying. Him a like, player. if you're a prude, like we obviously are, <laughs> we're like that. You're you're a you're a monster animal, and keep some it kind in your of. Pants. Keep, yeah, keep, keep it keep it in your kilt. no not keep it in your pants just show, I don't want to hear about it <laughs> and if you're sex positive it's like well good so what I'm not interested <laughs> so there's, there's no need at all. 
So um, also, he is a grown man. You know. Yeah, he's our age, isn't he? He doesn't need well, to be going. Of years younger. When I was young, I was a sex pest. <laughs> like, congratulations. I don't know. Did you get? Did you serve time? Although, for it? To, to be fair, when he talks about because he, he goes to the bistro later, doesn't he? And him and Sarah are talking about it, and Sarah says, "Oh, I've had, I've slept with ten people," and he says, "Oh, I gave up at 20. and then gave she's up like, counting. Gave, yeah, exactly. She says, "What gave up?" Yeah, no, she doesn't say give up counts. He says, I gave up at 20. And she's like, what, you slept with 20 women? And she says, no, I gave up counting when I hit the age of 20. Oh, God. <laughs> Which was kind of funny. But also, I don't... It's funny because when I think back to young Adam, I think about the old actor who used to play Adam. He was this little sweet little boy, wasn't he? It's like, <laughs> how did he turn into this Adam, this incarnation? Serial molester. Yeah. But um, anyway, oh, yeah, that was kind of funny. But um, so yes, ten, ten, 10 guys that Sarah slept with, I tried to do a little... I, I did a little bit of um, Choripedia searching earlier. Isn't this a bit weird? Well, well, we know that obviously Sarah has slept with with, uh, with Neil. Neil Ferns. Neil Ferns, who fathered Bethany, and then and Todd, who fathered little Billy, didn't make it. And uh, obviously Callum as well, um, fathered Harry. But also in, in Sarah's romantic past, we've had... Um, we've had Aidan Critchley. I, I think they maybe slept together. I don't know. Well, we don't know. Um, Scooter, she went out with... Um, yeah, shrug about that one. He was in it for a little bit. Jason Grimshaw, they were pretty serious. They were getting married, weren't they? So we can assume well, there was a bit of a Then she found out he there. was Mr. Gay Weatherfield. Yeah. <laughs> and then Gary and obviously Adam, which still only leaves eight. So I guess there were two for luck, two two Italian stallions yeah, that she two... bedded when she was over in Milan. Yeah, Milanese hunks. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, pales in comparison to the notches on Adam's bedpost. So um, anyway... We have um we have Lydia back in the factory on uh, on Tuesday's episode and Sarah says oh yeah you know I was talking about being possibly pregnant last week turns out it was a false alarm um and my and, boyfriend and, of shagger and, yeah and also she starts joking about how many women that her husbands had which is bizarre um and they agree oh let's go out for a drink together at the Christmas fair do you to know talk what when you talk it. about your husband shagging loads of women it makes me think I would like some mulled wine yeah they love that Christmas market don't Sarah and Lydia they go there twice this week I tell you what so much to do there there's there's wreaths I know there's she's like should wine. I go there's, back there's more mulled wine listen girls you can get some very nice mulled wine from Lydia yeah you don't need to go to sit out in the cold and if you put it in a mug you only have to heat, put it in the microwave for a minute <laughs> and it's instantly deliciously hot your recommendation that is definitely my recommendation Not an ad. and you don't even have to sit there with a stick of cinnamon trying to use it as a straw <laughs> just leave the cinnamon out so Lydia comes back to see the Sarah at the factory on Wednesday and says that was so fun at the Christmas market last night let's go again but I don't really like the idea of Adam coming along when Sarah suggests might this rape because me. there might be a little bit of a mystery going on there Adam turns up anyway and Lydia clearly knows this guy but he has no idea because um, he may have he may have bedded them. But he's not committed to him them to memory. He's, he's he how can he be a... sure he's had twenty women? It could have just been the same woman. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He could have been married at wearing one point different clothes knowing. before she stripped for him. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, he, he's got no idea. His her kid turns up as well. Uh, Finn, he was called, and she says, "Oh, we we, we learned that my last serious relationship was when I was at uni." And he, he's not really getting this. Um, that maybe she's hinting at something, but I don't know, is she? Because Finn seems too young to be the spawn of Adam. So unless um, unless she's been putting some of his, his semen on ice just for a rainy day, then it's probably unlikely that this is Adam's baby. But... Adam seems like the sort of guy, if you asked him to fill an ice cube tray for you, he wouldn't question it. He'd just go, yeah, kinky. <laughs> I did this when I was younger. Well, may- maybe that's how he thinks he's bedded 20 women. They were like, yeah. there were 20 cubes in the <laughs> ice, tra- ice cube tray. <laughs> and he just counts I'm them. I'm going to call this one Louise. <laughs> no, he's going to give them all Scottish names, isn't he? This one's Jock. This one's Angus. This one's Morag. <laughs> I was saying the names of the ladies, not the children. Oh, okay. But you're right. It could be, I mean... It's getting, it's getting I a bit don't weird think, now. It is getting a little bit weird, but I'm interested because this this kid was obviously shuffled on stage by by the actor's mum. Going, off you go, you're going to be in curry, lovey. And and he kind of stands there for a bit and says, "Can I have a, a can I have a mulled wine, please?" And and it's it's clearly just to make the viewer go, "Hmm, 
What's all this? That's time? obviously his child. But yeah, I, I don't think the timeline works out for it. But um, anyway, later on, Adam admits to Sarah that yeah, maybe I did date Lydia once or twice, but I can't really remember how serious it and was. And date is a euphemism for shag. Yeah, and Sarah's quite mad at this because Sa- Sarah's been going all week about having a girl crush on Lydia, hasn't she? Which is, is that, that how girls weird. talk? Uh, if see, you've got I... a good friend, are they your girl crush? When now? I was younger. And we're showing our age all the way through this podcast. We've suddenly get, got to nearly 40. Yeah, this it? time next year, Gemma, one half of the podcasting team is going to be 40. Um, but we just had friends. Yeah. It's, it's, that's that not a thing anymore. And we didn't even text each other or anything. Is Sarah now pansexual? Maybe. So she, I don't know, that... I'll tell you what she is. She's mulled wine sexual. Anyway. But everyone is this time of year. I'm not. <laughs> Sarah's only like four years younger than us, I'm going to say. Although she doesn't look it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so th- that was that. Then we have a short scene with them on Thursday where um, th- their alarm goes off and they have to go and have a shag. And that was the end of that. Because, oh yeah, Sarah gets mad because when Adam has given her a list of all the women that he's slept with and Carla's name isn't on that. So she's kind of mad that he's trying to minimise minimize the, the, the fact that that ever To be happened. fair, he probably forgot. He's, there, he's had so many. I say what I've always heard about Carla. Forgettable shag. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they have to go and dash off to go and make a baby. Um, and then on Friday, the story just comes into, oh, should we have Christmas on our own? You tell your family, I'll tell my family. Oh, none of them like the idea, so let's go have Christmas together is basically it, wasn't it? I Ken don't... calls Adam, Adam selfish because he's like, what about Peter? This is his first Christmas with his new what liver. What about Peter's new liver? We want to introduce it to the family. Yeah. Peter's been fine for the rest of the year. I think, I think I'm assuming he's okay now, so that was a bit, that was a bit of a weak... I Ken, don't understand. Ken says, you don't have my blessing. I don't understand why, why Adam and Sarah thought that this was going to go down any other way than like a hot sack of... But what did, they, what did they expect to happen? Like, they're married now. They can't spend Christmas with both of them. So either Ad- Ken was going to have to accept that they weren't going to be with him or Gail was going to have to accept that they weren't going to be there. Well... Equally, so wouldn't they just tell the other one that they were at the other one's house and then they go off and have it on their own? I'm sure that the comedy hijinks could ensue there, and nobody would ever find out. Yeah. What equally what? I don't. I was just gonna say I don't like you spend every other evening by yourself. Yeah. What's... Why would Why would you go? Oh, special Christmas. Let's do things different. Let's well, just stay in. They can have a They can have a little Christmas Eve fun, can't they? Well, it depends on whether a ovulation alarm goes off in the middle of the Queen's speech. Oh yeah, imagine, <laughs> imagine having to explain that one when they're when they're having dinner with Ken Barlow. He's like, yeah, oh, but yeah, you know, I know what? what that's like. Parents I was get a player like... in my life well, as well. Only twenty, Adam. <laughs> when parents want you to give them grandchildren, yeah, be like, oh, that's my ovulation alarm. Ken be like, quick, get upstairs, off you go, off you go. get upstairs, use my bed. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, Adam's already his grandkid, isn't he? He, he wants that's a great, a great grandkid. grandkid. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that was that was kind of fun, but also fairly throw away this story. I like I like Lydia. Um, I won't get too attached to her because I'm assuming she's not staying. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, I, I kind of hope that this um, Adam story isn't that Finn is his because then it just seems like it's going to be the same as the Sam story. Yes, Nick's, I know. Nick, this is the, literally the same thing has happened to Nick twelve months ago. That he meets somebody and goes, oh, I shagged you once. Oh, you got a kid. I wonder yeah. who that's me. Yeah, a lot oh, of mine. men with unexplained, yeah, unexpected children, small children appearing in their lives completely out of nowhere with no idea that they had one. I know, and I know they're in a soap, think, so the ratio is higher than in real life. But come on, 12 months. I think somebody on the storylining team's going through something. Do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I also thought the way that they had... Um, Literally at the beginning of one episode, him saying, oh, look at all the women I slept with. And then two episodes later, it's like, oh, there's one. <laughs> there's one of them. Yeah. It's a, yeah, a bit I know, of a but on the street, he can't, he can't move for him. Yeah, that's that's I noticed true. That you He's bedded didn't... the whole of Weatherfield. I noticed so... you didn't try to make a list of how many people you reckon Adam shagged on the, on the cast. No, I'd been there all day with that. Yeah. Who hasn't he shagged? Mary. No, unfortunately for her. I do like how they, um, as much as Mary winds me up sometimes, I, I like how they keep referring back to her crush on Adam as weird as it makes her out to be. So She's not that much older than him. 
Well, she didn't she say something like, oh, if I was 10 years younger or 13 at a push? She was I thought she was talking them. about Ken. No, she was talking about Adam. Then she was going, oi, oi, bye, what, boy. If you mixed Adam and Ken together, you'd get the perfect man for Mary. You would, you would, yeah. Okay, what are sort we rating a, this week, a, Gemma? I think we've talked about it all. Sort of a pink man smoothie with hairs in it. <laughs> what are we rating this week? I, I've, uh, Because it's Saturday now, I put the poll up on the Facebook group already, so I have seen some of the scores that people are giving, and they're going on the high side. But I'm looking at this week and saying, I don't think it was that great. Why did people enjoy this week so much? Was it because of the Curtis stuff and all the everything that came out there? Because I can't, I can't think I that I thought it was fun and dramatic. It, 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 it was... In a way. Um, but yeah, I, I preferred it when Emma didn't know. And we just had... And this week we had lots of kind of sobbing Emma. And, and I'm a bit over sobbing Emma, really. Um, but th- that that story was definitely my highlight of the week. But the Audrey stuff was like, oh yeah, that's a bit sad for Audrey, isn't it? The Maria stuff was like, oh, stop banging on about the environment, Maria. Um, Sally's kind of funny sometimes but also some of the lines Sally had this week as I said earlier was far far too sitcom um, not not really interested in Mariam Lydia was okay but not much of a story there it just felt like a sort of week so I, I, I'm going to have to go lower than I think anybody I've seen on the Facebook group poll voting so far and I'm giving it um, two and a half <gasps> two and a half yeah, it was just like, mm, yeah, yeah. and it had that stupid stuff with Ruby and the pills, and and um, Emma on the with the medical DVD. I can't and, believe uh, it off marks for that. To be honest, as a teacher who who spends your whole career around children, you don't acknowledge that children are subject to a completely different form of logic than grown ups. <laughs> well, even though I was a I was a fairly intelligent, some might say irritatingly precocious child I still did some absolutely bonkers I know stuff you didn't do. I've taught and it made total age. sense to I've me at the time I've taught women's age I don't think anyone would just go over and take a pill seriously anyway I'm giving why this why do they have child proof locks on on medicine bottles then ah oh, shut up don't start using evidence against me. I'm giving this two and a half women that Adam has slept with during the recording of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how the half one works out but um I'm going to give it um, three and a half. Oh, you could go and hire them again. Mugs of mulled wine with a girl crush at the Christmas market. Fine, fair dues, fair dues. I, oh, excuse me, I want to say something. Yes. Um, I was talking to the listeners there because they thought we were finished. But actually, no, I want to say something. Where do you get these little plasticky mugs from that everyone's drinking out their mulled wine out of on the show? And do they say something cool like Weatherfield Christmas Market on it? Because if they do, I want one. Oh, yeah, I and I reckon know. they should sell them in the shop. Yes. Honestly, they need to sell stuff. like They More don't need merch. to make loads of it. They have to make a certain amount for the for the show mm. just make a bit more <laughs> idiots like me would buy it yeah absolutely right uh, character of the week I don't really know who my character of the week is this week I think Amy should get it for telling Emma that she's bonkers and she should dump Curtis Amy was great this week I she really enjoyed that she didn't have a lot to do but that's she's so sparky and I was so relieved I felt like the show was gaslighting me or like Emma was you know like oh it's fine it's fine he'll be able to get over it and, and then Amy comes in like the voice of reason no this is bonkers you need to dump him you, you, you argue a strong point there and in also, a week where I can't think of many other people that I'd want to pick I'm, I'm for the Amy. other thing about it too also is that Amy's been kind of in the back seat for a lot of the teen stuff hasn't yeah, she yeah she has and yes. um, I was getting a bit concerned about her character because we loved her when she was younger and she was a bit of a Wednesday Adams um, and then that sometimes the transition from childhood adolescence to adulthood can be very rough on on the <coughs> actors Chester. And they sometimes can, like, lose their appeal. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> but I'm really optimistic about I really, her. really am about I think she's Elle. great. She's feisty. She's fun. The, char- the actor is great. The character is great. The fact that she's got this sister out of nowhere um, was si- kind of silly, but given a bit more dimension to her. And seeing also, seeing her kind of giving 
almost grown up advice to her sister about a wedding. That was kind of sweet, don't you think? It's a bit of a yeah. coming of age moment for Amy there. Well, since they've giving since somebody they've... else advice. Well, she's been well, no, giving I her think, mum advice for she, years. Yeah, but I, I think in the Amy and Emma relationship, even though Amy's obviously younger, she yeah, has I know. been. The, she's the more mature one. Yeah, she exactly, exactly. No, I, I, I will, I will accept that, and I will also pick Amy as my Oh, you stole my idea. Week. Yeah. Oh. I confirm. That's fine. It's fine. I'll let Both you. of us. Two points for Amy this week. Well done. Congrats. Good job, Amy. Congrats. 